the dough. They put it, you know, in this shape, it's beautiful, like almost like a pyramid shape. Then they put it on the pillow. From there, it goes into the doni. It sits there for like three, four minutes, and then he covers it, takes the cover off, and then he's gonna pull them all out. Oh, they're gonna be so good. So we're gonna eat this. We're gonna eat a kachapuri and maybe some cha cha. Maluba, maluba. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Welcome to the Republic of Georgia. This country in the Caucasus region straddles the border between Europe and Asia. So tell me, is Georgia part of Europe or a part of Asia? Drop a comment below and tell me what you think. This country is super famous for its wine, monasteries, landscapes, and hearty cuisine. From the mountains of Kazbegi to Gori to Kutaisi to Ozurgeti, today we're exploring central and western Georgia. We're exploring ancient cave towns, bustling bazaars, and family-owned farms. And I'm taking you to try some of Georgia's best foods. Chakapuli, stuffed eggplant, kachapuri, and even kebabs. What do you think? Sounds delicious? Now, let's go to central and western Georgia. Let's go. Good afternoon everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Bin here coming at you from the beautiful Republic of Georgia. Today I'm very excited because I'm going to the extreme north of the country to Kazbegi, a beautiful mountain town on the border with Russia. And on the way, we're gonna stop at a town or a village that is famous because they invented the Kinkali or the Georgian dumpling. Yeah, so this road's called the, the Georgian Military Highway. It used to connect uh, Georgia with the Russian Empire. Along this way, there are some beautiful mountains. We'll be following the Aragui River all the way up. We'll be stopping in Pasanauri, this place where the Kinkali was born. And yeah, it's gonna be a great time. Yeah, so I don't know what to expect. I know it's just a winding road all the way up to the top of the mountains. Bring your sweater, even in July, because it gets really cold. I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm hungry. Kinkali, it's been a while. And this is the military road. So for the next 34 kilometers, we're gonna go like this, just winding along this beautiful mountain. Over here we have a reservoir. Incredible, look at that body of water. Wow, it reminds me of like Lake Coman in Albania. Actually, just the colors, you know, the mountains, beautiful blues, and over here, just more peaks, right? Just jagged edges, beautiful. Two minutes into the drive, we have a mini market here selling tons of souvenirs. And the best part about it is the view right here. Oh, and we have some coffee and some juices. Turkish coffee? You want a coffee? Yeah, for sure. Coffee for. 40, 40. I need one. No, and then we go. Sand coffee. Mmm. Oh, it's nice, man. Mmm. Really hot. Black. This one has a little bit of sugar, but it's good. A little sweet. Ah, you gotta let it sit for a second. Right, let me see this market. So there's a great stop to get some coffee, get a view, and if you want to, buy some souvenirs. They have a lot of traditional Georgian stuff, and they have other random stuff as well. You got some honey, you have uh, Georgian candy. Easy, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, great place. And a lot of tourists here, like a lot of tourists. So we're gonna keep going. Yep. Let's go. Uh, this road is one of the most popular tourist destinations in the whole country. People are coming up here to enjoy the mountains, enjoy the cool air. A lot of people come up here because they want to see snow and get selfies, right? Because we're going to go super high up into the mountains. Obviously in winter, lots of snow right now. Maybe some snow-cut mountains, maybe not, right? And I love the view overlooking the, the reservoir here. It's gorgeous. Super blue. A few trucks as well, so get ready. A little bit of traffic, right? This place is called Ananuri Fortress. It used to be an important place for uh, protection like against uh, invasions from the north. There's two uh, historical churches inside as well. Uh, it used to be kind of perched on the side of the mountain. Now that they've built a reservoir, like it's sort of like perched above this uh, lake. We're gonna walk into the fortress now. There's two churches inside. One above, one below. As you can see, the views overlooking the reservoir are epic. Wow, really old, huh? So we've got right here, the oldest tower here is from the 14th century, a traditional kind of fortification of this area. And we have like these different churches, one from the 17th century, one from the 18th century, with different kinds of uh, carvings on them. This tower reminds me of towers I've seen in Italy, like in San Gimignano, in Tuscany, very similar. Over here we have a church, and we have another church right over here. And as you can see, the inscriptions here, it's all old school Georgian, right? My, I'm not sure what it's gonna be, but it might be some lines from the Bible or like a hymn or it might be like the names of some of the people who worked on it or some kind of prayer. So this is a newer church, right? That's the yeah. older one above mm -hmm. us. Yeah. This one, as you can see on the side, you have 
a ton of inscriptions, plus at the top you have grapevines. Yeah, this uh, grapevine is a very important motif in uh, Georgian Christianity. Uh, grapes, of course, like wine is the big part of the culture and like it's reflected in the religious architecture as well. No, I love it. Yeah. This, these two right here and the cross, really beautiful. Mm -hmm. And we can walk inside as well. And this is still a functioning church, so church is in service every Saturday and Sunday, as well as every morning. And this is the church, right? Mm -hmm. So all over the walls, you see there's really old school frescoes from the 17th century, and then also plaster because later, you know, Soviet era, they cleaned it up. Yeah, later like they, they whitewashed the walls and like they've been able to restore some of them. Ah, these are beautiful. Mm -hmm. This one's huge. So basically, obviously, it's always around Jesus, right? So yeah. the Bible. This, this one's quite unique, actually, because so you have like Jesus and, and the saints up above, but below you have this sort of like vision of hell. You can see some like devils and you can see some people who are condemned to uh, suffering. And so this kind of uh, wow. fresco is quite unique. It's a beautiful church. Huge ceilings like this. And then this over here is like more Russian style, right? Yeah, this is a Russian style, what they call this iconostasis, uh, the front of the church where they put the icons of the different saints. This is more Russian style. And as soon as you come out of the church, go all the way to the far end, and you get beautiful views over the reservoir. And we have an abandoned church here, a mini beach. Over here we have, I guess, like a little watchtower, right? Yeah, gonna be a bell tower, actually. Bell tower, bell tower, sorry. It's a long day, man. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're done here. Let's continue. I need to eat. I want some kinkali. Can't wait. All right, so we just got back in the car, and unfortunately for us, it started raining, so we're just trying to make it straight to the kinkali spot. And over here, we have a, a river that it's like a white river and a black river. Yeah, so this is the Aragbi River. Uh, it's coming down from the mountains, like uh, to the center of Georgia. And up at, in the town where we're gonna have kinkali, this uh, two different branches of the river come together, the Black Aragvi and the White Aragvi, and so we'll take a look at the, take a look at their meeting. And this is the Black and the White Aragui. So this is the confluence, right? This is where they connect. Black, white, I mean you see the difference right away. Eventually, obviously, it mixes. Wow. Beautiful, but I'm getting too wet. Let's get back in the car. Go. Let's go, I'm hungry. So next to the town confluence is like the small town of Pasanauri, famous for as the birthplace of King Kali. And here we go, Gouda restaurant, G-U-D-A. They make some of the best kinkali in town. How are you? Everything good? I need kinkali, I need 10 kinkali. Here we go, in the kitchen, with all these beautiful ladies. Kinkali? <laughs> okay, let's see it. Kinkali, some of my favorite soup dumplings of all time. How does this work? Well, she flattens the dough, then she fills it with beef. After that, she folds it, and usually it's 19 plus folds. Anything less, it's not that good. Yeah, exactly. she does like 20. She said. Yeah, she said she should, it came out more than 20. I can't wait. I'm ready. This is amazing. We're trying five different types of kinkali. So beef and pork. Then we have mushroom. We have potatoes. We have cheese, and we have garlic. Garlic chain is extremely traditional. Beef is traditional, garlic is traditional, all born right here in this town. I'm most excited for the garlic one. Look at this, it's a little different, right? It's not like a dumpling, it's more like a samosa, empanada, like a, a pie, right? A little pie. Super thin, I love how she folds everything. Wow, the dough looks amazing. Anna, Anna, right? Yes. Anna, thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome to Georgia to make difference when, when they are boiling all together. They just put all the kinkalis in to boil. It's gonna take like 10 minutes. They're also gonna make for me another dish. So what is it called? Klovana. Klovana. Yes. So it looks Let's like a huge kinkali, but you added, what is this? It's cheese and? Cheese and beef. Cheese and beef? No, not beef. Oh, beets, beets. So yes. the leaf of the beet, right? Yes, leaves. Okay, and so cheese. beet leaf. Little bit of salt uh, and that's all. I mean, I would eat this entire ball myself so right you now. So you can try that. You can try? Mm. Oh wow, nice fresh cheese, yes. incredible herbs. Mm. It tastes fresh, yes? It's super fresh. Yes. I mean, eat that whole ball and you're perfect. Yes. <laughs> so she rolled it all out, she put it on a pan and threw it into the oven, seven, eight minutes, it's ready. So in the next 10 minutes, we're eating everything. Plus we're gonna have some craft beer, some cha-cha, 
Yes. Homemade cha cha. After 10 minutes, everything's done. We have the ginkali. We have this amazing dish. It's like a herbal pizza. She added extra butter on top. She cut into slices. Oh, it's gonna be the best. And this is our feast. I gotta say, big thanks, to my friends here at Gouda Gouda Restaurant. An amazing restaurant, super modern, rusty at the same time. And here we go. We have a lot of kinkalis, so we have like five different variations. I'm gonna start off with the sheep or lamb kinkali, right? They were saying sheep, but it's lamb right here. So the way you eat it, flip it upside down, and you go in. Make a little hole and suck. Mm, this is incredible. I mean, the juices of the lamb, so different from the beef and the pork. It's a whole different animal. Whoa. Mmm. So tasty, so fresh. And this lamb came from here, right? <laughs> and they bring spices from the Tusheti region to add to this one. Mm-hmm. Mmm. And you always leave the little tip, right? And then, at the end, we see how many we ate, right? Yeah. So we're gonna, we're gonna do a little challenge. How many are we gonna eat? And right here, we have the garlic and kali. A little different, right? So, and then we add some butter on top. Completely different, right? Mm-hmm, mm. mm. Wow, garlic, I mean, I'm a big fan of garlic. And here, in Georgia, some of the best garlic dishes ever. The, the chicken, creamy chicken dish with garlic, one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, if, you, if you're with your spouse, don't eat this. You're gonna have bad breath. <laughs> so no one's doing this one, only you guys. <coughs> we have to have some cha-cha, and here we have the house cha-cha. Calmar Jos. Calmar Jos, Calmar Jos. House specialty cha-cha made with tarragon. <sighs> oh, that's good. And traditionally, quincale is only had with cha-cha and beer, or, or beer. No wine. Galmar Joe's, cheers to the mountains. So the mushroom one isn't so juicy, but it's spicy. Mmm. Oh yeah. I love the way you guys do the dough. Still a little dense. Mmm, just different, right? Oh wow. Mmm. Mushroom, herbs. Oh, dude. And for this one, I'm just gonna eat the whole thing. Mm. It was worth the wait. Wow. I'm so happy, Anna. I'm so happy. Maholavani. 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 Which is easy to pronounce. It's hard to pronounce. Cheese, beet leaves, and dough. Mm hmm. Mm. It's like a super earthy herbal pizza, basically. Nice light dough. Inside the whole filling. Oh, I love the beet, beet root leaf. Mm -hmm. Dude, it's the truth, man. Wow. This is Georgian bread with beet leaves. Potato quincales. They do this shape so you can tell which is which, right? So it looks like a fish shape, right? The way they did the dough. And I'm gonna add some pepper. I love pepper, black pepper. Potatoes. Mmm. Oh my god. Different world. If I had to compare it to anything, I'd say this is like almost like potato gnocchi, right? But huge. Mmm. And adding the black pepper, it's the best thing ever. Huge fast. Tim, you want one? Did you put some of this butter on? I didn't, but you could. Oh man, I'm gonna try it. Let's try this. Oh man. Oh, super cool. So remember guys, this is very different from anything else you have in the world, right? Never really compare it, but at the same time, try to understand what the differences are, right? So for me, I mean, potato is not my favorite. I think my favorite was the lamb one. Like, out of all of them, wow. Bakugan. Mmm. going. Mmm. Look at that. I just love the dough here. Mm -hmm. So this is Black Lion, the first craft brewery in Georgia, and this is an American pale ale, not Indian pale ale, American. It's very, you know, crisp. Almost looks like a pilsen. Mm. 
Mmm, it's crafty. Nice head. Oh, very light. I'm guessing it's 4.5%, right? 5.5%. Nice. And so you can find this all over the country because I've only seen it here. This is great. So now you know. Black Lion. It's a good beer. It's nice. It's easy to drink, but it's still crafty. It's not one of these crap beers, right? What is this? Shepherd's Cut. They were sleeping in it. They were traveling in it. Yeah. All right, my turn. Tim, let's see how it look. Like a shepherd. Oh, there's nowhere to put in my arms, right? Just get this. Yes, just just on, over. On the shoulder. Like that? Yes. How's it look? Good? You look good, man. You look good. With the hat on everything? Yeah, great. absolutely. Perfect fit. There I take it. <laughs> <laughs> my friend, thank you so much. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome. The best. We are waiting for you in Georgia and in Gouda. You're always welcome. The best Kinkali in all of Georgia, right here. Thank you. Thank you. So good, so good. Let's go. Let's go. Making a quick stop uh, to try some cha-cha. Tim, what is this place? So this is another restaurant on the in Pasanuri on the on the side of the highway. We're gonna try, I think, some uh, melon, some uh, peach, and some regular cha-cha. The building is like a rustic alpine house, right? Two stories. Outside you have a terrace. To the left you have some fish. You have a rabbit. Really beautiful setting. You have people eating inside, outside, and now we're gonna try some cha-cha. Garbanjos. Garbanjos. Garbanjos, my friends. Oh, this is smooth, light, melon. Oh, it's the best, give me a liter. So we came up to the top to see the terrace. Beautiful dining area inside, outside. Love it, look at this, rustic. It really reminds me of the Albanian Alps. Very similar, just in like everything. From the buildings, to the mountains, to the beautiful river right there. I love this place, dude. Yeah, this is a beautiful place, David. Absolutely amazing. Let's keep going. Still have a long way to go, about an hour and a half to get to the top. So over the past 30 minutes, we've been driving along the river, going slowly to make our way up. It's getting colder. But the, I mean, the views are insane. Look at all these mountains, beautiful, lush, green. You have some jagged edges. Going up over the Juari Pass, uh, which is uh, gonna cross over like the main ridge of the Caucasus, uh, and we'll come down on the other side of Stepan Zminda. Um, yeah, we're going up. Uh, hopefully we can get past a few of these trucks and uh, have a nice trip. And why are there so many trucks? Yeah, this is the main highway connecting uh, Georgia and Russia. So like all of the transport from there, like all the goods, like going to Armenia and everything else, like they're coming along this road. So we're making it to the top of the pass and right now we're gonna see Gudauri, the biggest ski resort in the area. Like we can see it right here. Here's uh, the ski resort. Obviously there's no snow there right now, but uh, loads of people come here in the winter time and have fun in the snow. After we get past Gudauri, we'll be crossing down into Stefan Zminda. It's the biggest ski resort in Georgia, so if you come here in the winter months, this is where you have to go. So we're here in Godauri, and I gotta say, you better bring a sweater in the summer because it's freezing. And I might stop soon and get myself a wool hat because the temperature just keeps dropping and dropping and dropping. And as we get more and more north, it's gonna drop even more. Wow. So this place is a big like mix in terms of like hotels, houses, it's all over the place. It's not like one ski resort with a lift. It's everywhere, right? Absolutely, yeah. Like, they're, like you need, All the slopes here are just covered with different uh, hotels and ski resorts. You see all those white spots behind me? That's all sheep, like a billion sheep up in the mountain. Wow. Woo! It's freezing too, Tim. Woo, yeah, so it's cold, man. It's cold. How much, our window. How much time left? Um, about half an hour. We got to get up to the pass, and we're gonna go roll, roll on down. This is it. We just passed the Cross Pass, highest point, 2,300 plus meters above sea level. Wow, we are in the clouds. Look at the mountains here. You can't even see the road. This is insane. How do you do this, bro? Oh man, you just gotta keep a steady hand on the wheel. All right, we're just uh, entering Stepan Sminda, also known as Kazbegi. Uh, unfortunately, the Weather is not the greatest. Well, we got a little bit of rain. It's got overcast skies, so we can't see the main mountain, which this place is most famous for. It's hidden in the clouds. But hopefully uh, tomorrow morning it'll clear up a bit. 
We just passed the center of the town, beautiful little square, a few supermarkets. We made a right, we're going up the hill, and I think we're staying at a place called Alpine House. Yep, they're called Alpine House. They're right over here, and we're, we're heading right in. How are you? Yeah, good. Good? Yeah. And this is where we're staying tonight, Alpine House. So it's a 12 room hotel, right? As soon as you walk in to the left, here we have lobby area, reception. Over here to the right, we have the restaurant, and it's three stories. We're going up to the second story where my room is. In terms of accommodations, they have a few different styles of rooms, right? So they have a double, a triple, they have queens, and then they have like more modest accommodations that don't have bathrooms, so they have shared bathrooms. Exactly. Right? And then over here to the left, this is your room. This is where I'll be staying. So it's a double, yeah. right? Beautiful. This is all super rustic, right? Mm -hmm. So all wood. Everything's super nice. You know, this is Alpine. Same thing in Albania, same thing in the Swiss Alps. You know, just beautiful wood, nice, warm. You got the heater. You have a little table over here. So you have your coffee, right? You can do some work here. And I love the bathroom. Super clean. Over here is my room. Let me turn on the lights here. Right? So same type of bathroom, but I have a queen size bed and I have this view. Wow, beautiful. Amazing. So we have mountains over here. Unfortunately, we have a lot of clouds right now. It's raining, but that's where the main range is, right? Yeah, exactly. It's all covered in clouds right now, but if it was gonna be clear, you could see Mount Kazbek more than 5,000 meters high, like right there, right straight in front of us. I can't believe we can't see it. Yeah, it's absolutely. It's so close. Like maybe, I hope we'll see it in the morning because it's something to see. And right below us, we have the terrace, right? So we have a few different tables, very rusty as well, all wood. So I think it's time to go downstairs, have a cha-cha, and maybe have a salad or something, something light. We had dinner like at 5.30, so. Yeah, just something, a little snack to have before bed. I need to eat something, I can't go to bed hungry. And this is the restaurant. Oh, wow, what are we doing here, cha-cha? Yeah. This is like a cha-cha fight? Okay, it is cha-cha time, my friends. All right. Okay. Gabarjos, Gabarjos, Gabarjos. Wow. That's strong. But yeah. A little chaser. Yeah. Mmm. Dude, try this. Oh, what's this? Mmm. Cherry juice, I think. All right, David, this is dinner. It looks like we got a uh, tomato and cucumber salad with walnuts, uh, your regular puri bread. Looks like this is uh, lobio, the bean stew with a fried corn patty on top, and chadi. Some different kinds of pickles. We have the jonjoli again. This, I'm not sure what this is. It looks like some, some kind of egg dish. Uh, in a in a clay pot uh, Might be some potatoes inside there as well. It's like we got a wrap over here. It's like it's a uh, chicken uh, some salad uh, With some like fries and ketchup. We've got some different kind of fried vegetables Looks like some chicken and sesame seeds on top and That's it my friends. We are ready to eat. We have a feast here between everything. I don't know what to start with beans Yeah, let's go for it. These look so good Mmm Mm. Super nice. Clay pot, man. Wow. Yeah. I think this one's prepared with uh, some walnuts in it. 100%. Mm -hmm. They're so creamy. Yeah. And this one has a nice uh, sort of kick of spice to it. It's mm -hmm. like extra spicy. Extra spice. I'm gonna have to have more of that later. Shit, it's good. It's too good. Mm -hmm. And this one over here is the, their main dish, right? Yeah, their house special. Their house special. Mm -hmm. So it's um, like egg, cream. I don't know what else is in here. Some potatoes, some chicken, some mayonnaise, they said. So some, some tomatoes as well. Wow, that's good. Mmm. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. So it's like a creamy tava dish, right? Mm -hmm. Clay pot. Mmm. Delicious. What is in there? Oh, my gosh. I'm going to eat more of that for sure. Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah, me too. That's the one dish you have to have when you come here. And then this one is like a fajita, right? Yeah. Literally, it's fajita. That's mm -hmm. what she said. And yeah. it's, uh, it's like a cracker here, mm -hmm. right? Let's see that. Yeah, some of that. Mm-hmm. To be honest, I'm pretty full from the kinkali because we had a lot of dumplings earlier, but this food is absolutely It's so good, amazing. like you just got to have some of it. Mm-hmm. So good. Mm -hmm. Everything's from farm, right? Farm and table, straight from here in these mountains. Exactly, and they just, looks like they got a, a really good uh, staff in the kitchen there. This stuff is delicious. I've tried this tomato. So this is walnut, we have coriander, 
I don't know what else is in here. Purple basil. Mm. The coriander and purple basil. Little changes. Mm -hmm. And the salad. You know, if you just saw it, you think maybe it's like a Greek salad, mm -hmm. you know, just a fresh summer salad, mm -hmm. but it's not. It's a different thing. Exactly. Walnuts all day, too. Yeah, all the different herbs like bring really bring the flavors together. Mm hmm. Dude, I get walnut taste everywhere. Mm hmm. At this point, everything is like just blended together. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And what's this? That's fried cornbread. Just fried cornbread. My friend, cheers. Cheers, man. Mm. Where has this been on my life? See, in the States, we don't do a fry like that. Mm hmm. Just fluffing cornbread. Yeah, exactly. Here, nice, crispy, yeah. crunchy. Now this is the sort of a uh, this sort of cornbread like is often served with a lobia with the beans. So it's a so you put you it together. Can, you can just like scoop it up like this. Like that's it. Mm -hmm. Perfect combination. Hey, Gamarjos, Gamarjos, Gamarjos. That's it, my friends. We had an epic Ooh. day. Ooh. <laughs> driving up on the military road. Absolutely. All the way up here to Kabaji. To Kazbegi. Kazbegi, Kazbegi, Kazbegi. Okay, so we went all the way up. We stopped at a fortress. We stopped at the town to try uh, the Kinkali, right? The exactly. The Gura restaurant. This is like the most famous place because that's where it was invented. We tried like five different styles. Potato, garlic, uh, lamb, beef, what else? Mm -hmm. Mushrooms. Mm -hmm. And then we had that incredible I don't even know how to call it. I mean, cheese, bread, and then yeah. herbs. The maklovani, the maklovani, the bread with cheese and uh, beetroot leaves. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And after that, we made our way all the way up here, going through the pass. Incredible views. I mean, it got a little crazy with the rain, but I mean, just the mountains, the scenery, the sheep, the trucks, the nonstop trucks. Because obviously, this is where it connects the border with Russia. Then we made it here to Alpine House. Incredible hotel, right? So twelve yeah. rooms. Exactly. Three floor, three stories. Yeah. Very and wonderful hospitality. Exactly. You know, like kind of couldn't ask for better food. Uh, friendly staff. Very rustic. You know, you're up here. You know, in the mountains. Beautiful place. Tomorrow we're going to be exploring the whole area. And yeah, guys, I hope you enjoy the video. It is. We got to 30 at night. <laughs> And if you did, please give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment below, subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content, and I'm gonna eat some more of this food. Oh nice. yeah, this potatoes. Oh, yeah. Mm. This one's amazing. Good morning everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Been Here, coming at you from Kazbegi, one of the northernmost towns in the country of Georgia. Today I'm going to take you on a four hour exploration of this beautiful mountainous town. So you can see over here we have Kazbegi Mountain, Snow Covered Mountain, ginormous, we can barely see it right now, but it's gorgeous. In front of that we have the Holy Trinity Church, which is one of the main attractions here, and over here we have the main center right so this is a square you have some supermarkets you have lots of guest houses and what can you do here well basically you can go hiking you can eat lots of kinkali and enjoy mountain views tim what are we doing we're gonna drive up to gergeti holy trinity church and enjoy the views from there and that's right up there yeah right there look at the mountain oh man you can see it now so you say if you can see it, it's like a sign of God, right? <laughs> like, like it likes to hide in the clouds and uh, on uh, whenever it comes out, it's so beautiful. I'm excited. I'm very tired. 6.30 in the morning. Barely slept last night, but it's all good. Today we're going to do a lot of things. We've got four hours to explore. After a two minute drive, we made a left and we're going straight up to the mountain. So what do you see here? Well, you see a few different farmers, right? Some more guest houses to the left. But if you really want an awesome view, go to where I stayed last night. Alpen House, right? Alpen House? Alpen House, Alpen House. We're on the road up to the church. Uh, we're gonna, we're driving straight towards the mountain. We're gonna go up, uh, up a bunch of switchbacks and we'll get to the Gergeti Samava. 20 minute drive, really short, quick. Let's go. There's two roads to get to the top. You can either take, you know, the paved road or off the beaten track, right? Yeah, so uh, the paved road, apparently there was like some uh, construction work on there so we're going uh, on the 
off-road way up to the top. And over here we have a beautiful river. Wow, can't even imagine drinking that water. It looks so fresh. And that comes from the Kasbegi, right? Yeah, it's gonna come straight down from the glacier up there. So you have this like wild mountain river like already full of water. It looks so cold. After a 15 minute drive, we are up here at the church. Temperature has dropped dramatically. Bring your sweater, you will freeze in July. Incredible, over here we have some horses, we have some cow, and you know, these horses aren't wild. Their, their owners are out here somewhere, but it's pretty amazing. It's just like running here, enjoying nature. So hiking up here is possible, all the way to the top. If you wanna hike to the top of the mountain, it's four day hike, right? Yeah, so like uh, from here, like you gotta hike to a place called Medio Station, uh, which is a base camp for climbing the mountain. You can do that in around a day from here. And then once you acclimatize for a day, then it's a long 24 hour hike from uh, Medio Station to the summit. <laughs> the stray dogs, they're always so funny in this country. They always <laughs> dive on you. Okay, so we're gonna hike up to the top of the church. Man. Go bother Alex, go bother Alex. <laughs> Alex. <laughs> so we've got these uh, slate rocks here, traditionally was used like as a construction material. Like even today you can see some of the old houses like built out of this like sort of slate uh, tiles. Natural rock, look at this, beautiful. So I've seen houses like this in, uh, in Albania as well, also in Italy, houses that are, you know, in the mountains, usually they use this type of material, right? Mm -hmm. It has this natural flat edge, so like you can just like really stack it up and like build something out of it as easily. We finally made it to the top. We got a beautiful bell tower, dates back to the 13th century. And just so you guys know, if you want to, you can hike up here. It takes about 90 minutes. Yeah, something like that. Not so bad, but obviously because of time constraints, we just brought the car up 20 minutes. And yeah, beautiful, look at this. So it's incredible stones, lots of beautiful carvings right here on the doorway. And then over here, we have something really, Really interesting. There's like a person. So I guess the person who built it, right? All right, let's go inside the bell tower. Obviously, always stay shh, very quiet. So there's a legend that uh, in the ancient times, when uh, Georgia was under invasion by, by foreign armies, they would take like priceless re religious relics, like icons and crosses, and they would bring them up here to the mountains and store them in this church. It's incredible that they built this in the 13th century up here on the mountain. So they brought all the stones from the town all the way up here. And this was built over an ancient pagan temple. Wow, let's keep going. Next up we have the main church. And over here to the right, we have more beautiful views. And look at the size of these stones. I mean, just incredible, massive blocks. Look at this, huge. I can't even imagine bringing this up from the town all the way up here to the top of the mountain. <sighs> what people did for religion, right? And then over here, please dress modestly. So remember, men, you know, don't come in shorts. Women always have to cover your head. And if you don't have, you know, if you came hiking, you came with shorts, over here they have some pants and they have a scarf for women. All right, let's enter the church. All right, so they have got a church service going on inside there. Uh, filming and photography is not allowed on the inside. It shows right here. Um, but uh, one of the deacons was uh, kind enough to let us uh, film him like lighting some incense here outside the church. I just walked inside. It's very similar to like how the bell tower is in terms of how dark it is. Just like super, super dark. You know, you have a few different pockets that, you know, where light seeps through, but you have icons, you have candles, and yeah, it's gotta be really, really respectful here. And wow, I love this, man. Look at all these carvings. It's like, how do they put this here, right? Yeah. It's insane. Love it. All this intricate carvings. Amazing works of art. Like, and this is this stuff is as old as the church itself. It's been here for centuries and centuries. Walk around the church, get epic views everywhere you go. And this is the town, right? So Kasbegi is the Russian name, and in Georgian it's Stepan. Stepan Sminda, meaning Saint Saint Stephen. And where's Russia? Russia is uh, down the valley right there. This valley is called Dadiali, Dadiali Gorge. Dadiali Gorge the town, the church, the mountain, and that's it. All right, let's go down. Maybe we right. find some kinkali? Yeah. I'm starving. I, I doubt it. This time in the morning, 7.30 in the morning, it's gonna be hard to find food here, but we'll try. And this dog is chasing us. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, leave me alone. Leave me alone. And as you can see, there's a few hikers going up to the top of the mountain. It's a four-day trek. Uh, if you're very adventurous, you could do it. 
I'm not that adventurous and I have very limited time. So we're gonna go back down to the town. Hopefully we find some food and see what else we can do, right? Gotta get down this road and we'll be there. Right now the main road's under construction. That's why we're going down this rocky, you know, path that's not paved. It's a, it's a little bit of a, a, a bumpy ride, but that's the Georgian massage, right? <laughs> exactly. Tim, this road is rocky. <laughs> Yeah, man, it's nuts. <laughs> it's nuts, it's nuts. It was super we, steep. Good thing we have a good car. Yeah, we have a four by four. Woo, you can still gotta hold on though, cause it's very steep. There's a lot of potholes, you know, like just massive, massive holes. And over here to the left and the right, we have a small stream just flowing through. That's water coming from the mountain, right? Yeah, straight down from the glacier. I'm sure it's delicious. Yeah, you know, it's a great thing hiking around here. You can just like stop from any stream, like and drink, drink everything, it's amazing. So this is the village Gergeti. This is the same name as the church up there, Gergeti uh, Trinity Church. And yeah, this is the village on the other side of the Terek River from uh, uh, Stepansvinda. We just made it back to town and uh, it's 8.40 in the morning. Unfortunately, most things are closed at this time. So if you're gonna eat breakfast, do it at your guest house. But we do have a guy here making some Tony Puri, right? Uh, Tony's Puri, so he's uh, mixing the dough, heating up his uh, clay oven. My friend, you good? Georgi. Georgi. Georgi, I'm David. And right here we have the Tony or the Tandoor. This is Tony Puri. Tony's Puri. Tony's Puri. It's a little burnt here, a little charred, but still good. I'm gonna spray a piece off. Obviously, this is from yesterday. So it's a little stale, but you still have some fluffy parts right in the middle. Mm. Oh, so good, man. I love that smoky taste to it. This morning, I need food. Oh, he has to wait a little bit. He said the tandoor or the Tony is not hot enough. So he said in an hour, come back. He'll show us how he makes it. And yeah, let's go explore the town. Over here, we found a small cheese shop. So she has some meat. Got some cheese. Let's go inside, let's try some cheese. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, that is incredible. Salty, creamy, very creamy. I would have like a lot more. This is a special cheese from this uh, area, from the local cows. Uh, the uh, prices are here are written, so this, this block is nine lorries. I have one for 11 lorries here, one for eight lorries, so you can come to this shop and uh, get fresh cheese from this nice lady. And they're open early, so highly recommend it. Nine lorries, so three bucks for this. <sighs> I can eat the whole block, especially right now, bro. I'm starving. I can't, I can't fast today. Maduloba. Maduloba. I got a nice big block of cheese. We got our cheese, we're gonna get our bread. And yeah, that's gonna be breakfast, right? <laughs> yeah, I think so. We gotta put our own breakfast together. <laughs> awesome. And we're back here at the main center, right? So you have a hotel, a restaurant, with a monument, and uh, yeah, everything's still closed. So just know that when you come, don't expect things to open until at least, let's say, 10 in the morning. Restaurants don't open till noon, right? Yeah, oh, 10, 9, 10, or something like that. You can start to get your kachapuri. And, uh... and hopefully we'll find a bakery because I'm hungry. I need something right now. No cha cha. <laughs> we found a place that's called Coffee Corner. And I don't know if they're open. For me, Turkish coffee. They also have Kazbeki beer right here, which we're gonna take one so we can try it later. So it's a lager, product of Global Beer Georgia. Looks great. This coffee corner is located on the main road. You're just gonna see lots of trucks coming and going because the border's right here. Right next to us, we have the Kazbegi Visitor Center for Kazbegi National Park. And there you have an information board that shows you the flora and fauna. So lots of flowers, lots of birds in the area. And it's time for some Turkish coffee. Oh, it's like piping hot. Mmm. Oh yeah, it's good. $3 for this delicious cheese. And it's different, right? Because these, uh, these cows, are literally grazing the land right here, 2,000 meters above. Take a chunk here. Organic grass-fed cows. Mmm. Oh my gosh, dude, it is ridiculous. It's similar to feta in terms of like the like texture, cheese, bread, and coffee. Mm. Nice one. 
just walked out of the coffee corner and right next to us we have Tbilisi Marshruka. So basically this is a transportation service. You know, they have a minivan. It costs 10 gel per person, which is roughly like $3. Takes uh, roughly four hours to get down to Tbilisi and it leaves every hour basically. Let's uh, see if the bread's ready. Hopefully he started. Unfortunately, my friend here, he's not ready. The Tony's not ready yet, so we're gonna have to go and explore more of the area. We'll see you next time. Take care. All right, so we're heading out of town. We're gonna go to a little village called Snow. Uh, it's a really beautiful area. It's nice hiking around there. And uh, there's uh, some interesting sculptures we're gonna take a look at. And the village is famous for their water. We have it right here, right? Snow. So it's S-N-O. We're gonna drink snow in snow. <laughs> After a five minute drive, we made a sharp left and we're going through this beautiful valley, super lush, green, and over there we have snow. And you can see, so there's a tower there. I'm guessing there's a fortress here. Yeah, there's a fortress here. There's an old uh, watchtower with some sculptures that uh, some local guy has created out of rocks, uh, depicting the famous uh, writers from Georgia. Look at these massive, head sculptures it reminds me of what they have in turkey but obviously that one's like ancient this is new the artist is still working on more right here you see a huge rock so he's just sculpting it right wow beautiful huge looks like he has like some raw materials for some new sculptures here and here you have some like completed ones yeah i think this first one is marble look at this yeah man what detail huh beautiful stone beautiful just incredible massive blocks to even like bring this here mm -hmm. <laughs> how do they do that i mean big truck yeah, obviously gotta have a massive truck wow these weren't kings of georgia these were poets right exactly so these are different poets and writers from different periods of history over here we have uh, one of my favorite poets vajab shavala he's originally from a mountain region near here to the to the southeast um, here we have Shota Rustavelli, a very important uh, poet from the 12th century who wrote the, the greatest epic poem of Georgia. This is my favorite site in the area, dude. This is amazing. So the artist that did this, no one paid him, right? He just did it himself. So the best thing to do is leave a donation. Donation box right here. Do I even have five gel? Yes, I do. Okay, guys, let's continue. We made it here to the village of snow and I'm gonna drink some snow water in snow right here by this tower. Wow, beautiful tower built on a, a rock, medieval watchtower. Looks like it's been like fixed up. You can see like they have these uh, stuff overhead for I mean, dropping on people and uh, if they try to get in. It's always how it was, right? They either had like super hot oil, big boulders or arrows. There's the only way to defend back in those days. This area, of course, being the frontier between Georgia and, uh, and Russia and Empire. the North, like uh, this area was always uh, filled with invaders. So important to have your defense. Snow water in snow next to the medieval tower. Oh, ice cold. Really nice. Product of Georgia. Let's continue. Let's keep going. And this is what I call a Georgian traffic jam. Cows everywhere. They literally don't want to move. But they're eating bread from the, from the trash. We've been driving for about half an hour. We're about to get to the Chivari Pass, the highest point on this road. And right over here, as you can see, this is the funicular gondola, right? Beautiful yeah, cable, car. cable car. And where does it go to? So this cable car comes from this side up to the ski resort on the other side. So the ski resort's uh, Gudaudi. Uh, this cable car co costs uh, 30 laris and it takes an hour to get up. If you have time, definitely do it because they say the views from over there are stunning. All right, and here we go. Getting to the pass, and uh, I think I need another sweater, bro. It's too cold. Yeah, it's super chilly, man. It's super chilly. What is this? This is a tunnel which is built through the mountain, uh, which is uh, how the road manages to stay open in the winter months. We just went through the tunnel to show you guys, but obviously during the summer months, you don't have to use that. During the winter months, that's the only way to get around here because there's so much snow. And usually it's big, big lines because only one way, right? It's one way and then they have to, you know, the police have to direct traffic. And they're like one way for a few hours at a time. A few hours. Yeah. So you can literally be waiting in line for hours. Yeah, exactly. Crazy. I don't think I've ever seen a mineral water spring before. Look at this, beautiful. So we have the spring right here. You can go right below this little market and try the water, which we're gonna do right now. 
but I'm also gonna buy a hat. Yeah, so this is uh, some uh, mineral water springs uh, on the side of the road. Water has just like a high mineral content, high iron content, so you have this pink color. You can see like it's, it's left these like really beautiful deposits and like patterns in the stones. So which one of these is traditional? It's top row and the third row, they're both traditional. Okay. Hello, hello. Hello. So she's uh, knitted all of these herself out of wool. They're all made out of wool, right? Obviously, we're freezing up here. I like this one, so it's like white with the cross. Obviously, Christian country, always gonna have the cross. Look at that, oh, it's nice. What do you think? Looks good on you, man. You like white? Is it warm? Super warm. I mean, white, the black one's cool too. Yes, Black's fresh too. That's cool. That's cool? Yeah. You like it? Mm -hmm. oh, God, what do you think? Yeah, it looks good on you. She, she thinks it looks even better on you than the other one. I guess I'll try this one too. It. Let's see. They're all beautiful. So how much? How much? What's that? 30 laris for one of them. So 30 laris is like uh, $10, right? $10 roughly? I think I like the white one the most though. White one's really cool because white and red, right? White and red is the, the flag of the country. But this one's awesome too. It's my Black, right? It's just th this one looks the best on you. You think so? Okay, I take it. I take it. Great. Okay. I love these designs. Beautiful with the cross. Really nice, comfortable, keeps you warm. So come here, run next to the spring, and buy buy one from her. She wants me to try this one on too? <laughs> She's so funny. Besides hats, she also has scarves. Look at these. Beautiful. So, this is for a really, really cold day. Or if you go to the movie theater, you take this with you. <laughs> I like it. Maybe a little more. It's definitely frizzante. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to buy a real traditional hat from the area, it's these, right? This is what the shepherds wear. Beautiful. Black, white, all wool. Okay, let's keep going. Let's continue this road trip all the way down. We have a long way to go. This is one of the prettiest places I've ever been in my life. It is stunning, beautiful landscape. Look at the mountains, the snow all over the place. You see the shepherds with the sheep, the lamb just grazing the fields. And over here we have a Soviet monument. So what is this? So this is the monument to like Georgian and Russian friendship. It was built to commemorate the 200 year anniversary of the incorporation of Georgia into the Russian Empire. But it's still a monument in a very beautiful place like overlooking a uh, very beautiful view. And this is the Soviet monument. Right next to it, we have a mini market. They're selling some fruits, obviously more wool, hats, scarves, socks, and they have honey. How are you doing? Chestnut honey. Old taste, my friend. Oh my God. I mean, that one's like thick. They're very pasty. Mm, how much for that one? 25 of this. 25 lies, so like uh, six, seven dollars, right? Something like that. Oh, it's good. And so you have like, what, like six different varieties here? So we have chestnut, we have like a medical one. The strawberry, this mountain flower. Yes. All taste. Taste? It's cold. Oh, very good, American. Mm. <laughs> this sweet, very good. This, this one. It's good. I'm going to have to take that one. I'm going to take one. One? Yeah, I'll take this one. This one. This one. Thank you. Yeah, I always take at least one honey from every country I go to. That produces honey. You honey, you, you, you. Honey. I, I, I am honey. Yeah, I'm sweet, right? I'm sweet, like. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Cabarjos. Cabarjos. <laughs> That's cheers, Cabarjos. Thank you, thank you. So this is it, right? Right here it says the date 1783 to 1983, and it's basically a depiction of the history between Georgia and Russia. Wow, I love it. Beautiful colors. I'm out of breath. That was a little bit of a hike, especially up here in the mountains. You gotta slow down. All right, so this was built in 1983 by Georgian sculptor Zurab Tseretelli, only a, a few years before the end of the Soviet Union. And we have the depictions of different uh, traditional scenes uh, mixed with uh, the sort of the modern idea of progress. So you have like the traditional towers and then you have like cosmonaut. Here you can see the difference between the Georgian Orthodox Church and the Russian Orthodox Church, right? So this one and this one. And yeah. then this is supposed to be like Mother Russia, right? But you see that the, the woman has brown eyes and like in this uh, mural, like all the Georgians have brown eyes all the Russians have blue eyes, so it's probable that this, this woman's a, a, a Georgian. Oh my gosh. Woo, right? You have vertigo. Don't come here. It's really, really...
really windy. If you want to, you can also go ATVing. You can go horseback riding. And if you're really adventurous, you can go paragliding. I'm good with that. I, I don't have a stomach for that at all. And if you get hungry here, you can eat some snacks. I mean, they just have like some potatoes, fruit, and honey. That's basically it. We just passed a tunnel. And after that, three minutes later, we're passing through the ski resort, or ski resort town of Gaudi. Gudauri. 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 So you see just like, there's resorts, right? There's all resorts, all you have here. And there's a supermarket here called Smart Supermarket, which also has a bakery. So we're gonna stop there and eat something. It's already 11.30 and we are really hungry. All we had today was cheese. Yeah. Just made it to the Smart. Let's go inside, let's find some food. The cheese potato, you have spinach, you have this, this is chicken leaves. Yeah, okay. This one's meat. So it's just all, all pies, all pies. Yeah. And this is Lubiani, a bean pie. So what's the difference? Well, just the filling, right? Everything else is the same. Mmm. So it's like a, almost like a bean paste. Mmm. Some garlic. Oh, nice filling. Wow. This only costs three lati. It's like one dollar. I personally like eating on the street like this. You know, really fast, on the go. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice fluffy bread. They also have wines. I mean, it's a big grocery store, right? It's food, right? It's fuel. Yeah, absolutely. Fast food in Georgia. Yeah, these are uh, pastries with whatever, whatever kind of filling. He's got a bean one, I've got a cheese one. Mm -hmm. If you're ever on the go, you just uh, grab one of these like Kachapuri or Lobiani, and uh, it's cheap, it's filling. Yeah, it was like 250, so like roughly under one US dollar. Yeah, exactly. Mm, and now I'm getting to a lot more spice, a lot more peppers in here. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm. And that's the area, right? That's what it is. Yep. And that's it, my friends. We had an incredible experience here in Kazbegi. What a beautiful place right next to the Russian border this morning. Woke up bright and early, 6 30 in the morning. We saw the Holy Trinity Church. We tried some cheese, coffee. We saw the heads at snow. Tried some water in snow. Then we uh, went to the mineral waters. I bought a hat, which now I don't even need because it's so hot. Then after that, we saw the Friendship uh, Monument. Yeah, the right. Friendship Monument, uh, commemorating friendship between the Georgian and Russian nations. Exactly, beautiful monument, right there's a market, you can try some honey, buy some stuff, of course, buy some honey. And then we came over here to Smart Cafe, I tried that delicious pie, and that is it with Kazbegi. If you're ever coming to Georgia, definitely come up here, you know, it's a ski destination where we are right now. Up there is more for hiking, so you can go hiking for four days, you can go hiking for one hour, it doesn't matter, if you're into hiking, you can do it. And guys, if you love the video, please give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment below subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content i'll see you in the next travel food adventure in georgia Good afternoon everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Bin here coming at you from the hot Ateni Valley, a beautiful wine region south of Gori in the Republic of Georgia. Today I'm gonna to take you to basically eat food and drink a lot of wine. We're here at the Wine Artisans, it's a local winery. You know, the guy's house is right here. He has a cellar, lots of vines, vineyard all around us. And then from here we're gonna get in the car and we're gonna drive it's about 20 minutes deeper into the valley to a guest house. There we're gonna eat some food, experience local life, and just relax with Georgians. I'm excited, I'm pumped. Tim, are you ready? Let's go. And this is how this valley is, right? So all the wineries are local homes. It's not like these huge monster wineries. I'm sure there's some in the area, but this is more the cooler experience, right? You come in, you drink some wine, you, you know, talk some shop with the owners, and whoa, look at that. So is that all Cha Cha right there? Oh, hello. Hey, thank you so much. Thank you so hey, much. Andrew. Timote. Timote. Yeah. Pleasure. And you? David, David. David. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Come on in. Awesome. So what are we doing? Wine. Wine? Yes. <laughs> oh, this is actually not chacha, literally. It's a distilled wine. It's distilled wine? Distilled wine, yeah. Distilled wine is more like a brandy. Then okay. it's like a brandy spirit. Okay, but it's done only once. It's like single malt. All right. And then I add some herbs here. Herbs, some fruits, you know. This is something I have never tasted. Mm -hmm. I just invented this mixture. You just experiment. Ombalo, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Even in wine, everywhere. Uh, it is Ombalo and Kundari. Yeah, so like in English, Penny Royal and Summer Savory. Oh, wow. Yeah. Smells great. Nice herbs. Mm -hmm. But for sure, it's strong. <laughs> <laughs> Super strong. 52.7. 52.7? Them all. It's good. 
strange, huh? It's good. Yeah. So this is where you distill the wine? Yeah, yeah. You pour your wine here, you fire it up, okay? You keep temperature between 1800 somewhere, you know? And the steams, right? So the steam comes here, and we have a running fresh, like cold water here. It's like a fridge, right? Mm -hmm. Which liquefies again. So you get the liquid from here, the spirit, actually. So I've never seen it like this, only in Georgia where you have like basically an oven, right? So it's, it's a little different. Sure. Usually it's like just these two, mm -hmm. right? I want to try one because I think it's going to be the best I've had, right? Okay, sure. <laughs> after wine. After wine, after, after wine. wine. Because if you go like vice versa, then uh, we don't know what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be <laughs> careful. Yeah, I haven't slept in days, man. I mean, I've been on the run and I love this. So you have some more vines here. Over here, I guess you have like a little open kitchen, right? So people sit here, wine tasting. And can anybody come? We take advance orders. Yeah, reservations. Because we're we not a restaurant or something, it's a winery, you know? If we know someone is com coming, then of course we get ready and, you know. This is my kind of invention, you know? It's a oven table. I remove this stuff. I normally have this stuff from like a chimney there, okay? But it's removable. You fire it up and you keep your food uh, warm, mm -hmm. right? And you are warm yourself. And you have this little parks here. So if you think the warmth is not enough, you just remove it and this warm air comes on you, you know? So we've been sitting here on minus four or five without any problem. So it gets really cold in the winter. Right now in summer, it is boiling. It is cold. Minus three, four, five, seven. Let's go to the main place now. The that cellar. is the cellar, right? That is the cellar. Always. You can see so the three main spaces, let's say. It's underneath this square, let's say. Okay, there's a storage place, okay. This is the first technological place here. That's where the, the grape juice comes first and it ferments here and we change the vessel a few times here, you know. It stays here for about seven, eight months, okay. And when the first April approaches, which means now the warm season is coming, right? We bring all the, down, uh, the, the wines down there. It's a six meter deep room, you know, it stays here, sits here for exactly additional 12 months, 12 additional months, okay? After that, we move it to the next uh, uh, space, I'll show you, where it continues to sit for about three, four months before bottling. We soaked it yesterday because you were coming. We will keep bottling the 19 vintage. 2019 vintage. So if you guys don't know, this is Cueveri, right? So clay pots. So there's two types of uh, winemaking in the world, you know, European style, and that's in barrels, and then Cueveri, which is clay pots, amazing. Usually they build, they put this in before they even build the house, right? Something like that. This type of winemaking is over 8,000 years old. This is the birthplace of wine. And over here we have all the different tools they use for the Cueveri, right? It's a little different. Obviously it's not barrels, not stainless steel tanks. It's clay pots in the ground. So what are these? They're all different tools here with different functions. For example, this is a scraper. You know, it's a wild cherry bark. Okay, the, the one with the long handle is for short query, for small query, where you cannot actually go in, right? And the same thing with the short handle here, like this, right? It's for big queries, where you go in and, you know, the walls, the, the, the walls with this, you know? It's an old technology. I can't say you that you know I rely on this now because I now use this uh, some uh, antibacterial uh, uh, bulbs, the ultraviolet yeah. bulbs, and the ozone generators, you know. But but I still use these guys. Okay. For example, this is a square pipe that I told you. This is these two sticks. It's a uh, it's a baton, you know, as a batonage steering, right? It's to punch the the skins back down in the in the, in the juice. Mm -hmm. There's a function for for reds, for whites. You know? Now comes the fun stuff. We're gonna try some wines. Oh yes. So we're trying wine directly from tanks? Yes. Oh, that's the best. Everything here, eight or nine months old. Okay. So cheers, man. Cheers, my friend. Cheers, cheers. Cheers, cheers. cheers. Mmm. Mmm, nice. Dry. Super light. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of swish on, on nose, right? But yeah. when you drink it, it's really dry. Yeah, yeah, very dry. I mean, it's obviously, it's, it's still young, nine months, so it's still a little juicy, right? Hmm. Right? This is a mixture of three different grapes. 90% of it's uh, white, white grapes, 
but then we have two different reds to spice it up, you know, and to have a rosé wine. So normally rosés are made in a different way. You take red grapes with white flush, uh, you remove the skins, you make wine, you get a rosé, normally. But this is like basically it's a white wine spiced up with two different reds. So basically it's a hybrid. Hey, cheers man. Gavar Joss, Gavar Joss. Gavar Mmm. Oh, that's unique. You said four or nine grapes? How many different grapes? Three. 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 Wow. Yeah, so it's like a stiff type of rosé. I mean, I haven't had something like this before. It's light. Again, very young. That's why it's still like very of juicy. Of course, it's very young. But it doesn't feel like it's fermenting. It doesn't feel like that farmhouse. No, 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 it's finished. It's finished. It just needs some aging. Oh, that's it. Wow. I love it. So this is a mixture of two grapes and this is it from is. your new vineyard, yep. or the new part of your vineyard. Yep. Oh. Mm, yeah, so unique, right? Limestone, flint, and dull stone. You know, dull stone. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's excellent for, for, for grapes. And the soil itself is like heavy clay. You know, and the sun exposure is everlasting, I would say, you know, and uh, the winds all the time, like s slow winds. I don't even need to spray the video, most of the time, you know. So, basically it's organic wine. Absolutely, it's organic. organic. It can't be more organic, you know. It can't be more organic. No, no, no. More organic, not no way. No, no. So this is called the impossible wine because he blended two grapes that most people said can never be done, right? How much is that? Yeah, how much is It's half capital and Gordon's one is second. So it was these two varietals. I think they go perfectly together. Let's see. Mm, nice. Oh, super nice. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It's not too strong. Yeah. It's perfect. Wow, this is actually a perfect wine for the summer, you know, in the hot, mm -hmm. hot sun. But you go outside, take the whole barrel. <laughs> <laughs> next year, man. Next year. Next year, next, next year. year. These are babies here. We're now going to the real ones. Well, if there are any legs on the, on the glass, it means that it's quite high alcohol, you know. But then you look at the pace of them going down. You know, the slower they, that they are, the higher, the, the stronger the body of the, of the wine. Mm -hmm. So you can judge about wine without drinking it. It's like natural, the whole thing, but also in Georgian, like naturally means what, what was left after jackals. Gomers. And by the way, it's called uh, coyote? Jackals. Jackals, jackals, yeah, because all the jackals ate his harvest, that's why he only has uh, this smaller leader, right? Yeah. That's crazy. Tiny amount. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's try it. These bastards, <laughs> they go. <laughs> This is amazing. This is almost like a man. It tastes almost like an Italian wine I've had. Wow! So the most recognizable uh, flavors here, like wild cherry and kernel, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And maybe a little bit of uh, black hot also. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's good. Yeah. Super fresh. Enough of the babies. Let's go try some. Enough of the babies. Boys. Let's go to real ones. Big boys. Yeah, big boys. Now this is amazing, look at all these bottles. So he said he had like 48 different styles. Here we have Nakiso, so it's Chinuri and Moscat. Wow, it's quite uh, spicy and very different wine. It's also something new. Nobody really does it, you know. This Chinuri from 18 vintage, uh, I call it Chinuri solid because its body is really solid, you know, it flows like a milk. You know, oh. it's a very, very nice wine. Spent uh, about two and a half months in, in oak barrel, like old oak, oak barrel, French oak, right? And it gives a little bit of something, you know, to it. You won't even notice it when you drink. So the solidness is from there. Well, I want to try a good reserve. Uh, ah, yeah, why not? Why not? <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. Now, this wine is very typical, topical, let's say. You know, which means uh, in this place, in Shidakatli, everyone makes this mixture. This is a Chinuri and Gorgonzwane. The flavors are all oh, different, wow. all wow. very different, right? The every wine is, I mean, so easy, recognizable. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. 
Mm. Mm. It's a, a little sweet. Like a little sweet. The, the owner's saying it's not that sweet, but I feel a little bit of sweetness. Mmm. Nice. Wow. Another good white wine. And this room that we're in is where he basically bottles the wine, puts the labels on, right? So he has a machine here that he uses to fill up the bottles. And over here, he corks them. And over here, he has the labels. Beautiful label. I love it, man. So you have the... Yeah, yeah, yeah it's cool. So it's, it's like what you have upstairs, right? And over here, we have more barrels. That's the still wine. The bottles, they evaporate a lot of wine. So you have to edit all the time, you know? So all these bottles here is for the bottles. But the good thing about that is that the barrels are absorbing the wine, right, into the and oak. Then and, and then And then it makes it better for the next generation of wine, right, in a yeah. way. And then, and then eventually I buy the bottle, a barrel, and then I put beer in it, and it's even better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, agave, right? Agave. Oh, wow. Yeah. It smells sweet. I can smell something. It's like honey, the wax, the beeswax, mm -hmm. the, uh, the orange peel. Okay. Right? Wow. If you agree. Mm-hmm. I know. Yeah. It's funny because you said all that and now when I drink it, mm -hmm. I taste all of it. Mm -hmm. But the honey is my favorite part of this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, of course it's not sweet. I mean, it's very dry. Yeah, it's very it's dry. Like super dry wine. Yeah, and what I mean by sweet is like, you just get a- A nose. A, yeah, a nose. Yeah, yeah, because it has such a semi final It tricks you. Yeah, it yeah. tricks you, yeah. Cheers, my friend, cheers. 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 Mm-hmm. You know how this thing is called? Wine thief. Thief. So remember we tried the uh, the mixture of two grapes down there, the red ones, like Tacopito, Shaukapito and Tacopito, right? So this is the, s the same mixture, but uh, vintage 19, that was 20, and it spent about uh, three months already in the oak barrel, and it was sent, sent, spent another week or so, and then bottling. It's Dionysus. Dio. In Italian, Dio means God, so... Yeah, Dio. Dio caro. Dio. Cominciamo. Yeah. Yeah, this is the kind of God, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. God of wine. God of wine, exactly. God of Obviously. Wine. Of course, man. Actually, I have mm. a version without oak mm. barrel, which is Dia. Uh -huh. The Dia is like Zeus. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's a Dio, and the same wine which has not gone through the barrel, and it is Dia, like Zeus. But okay? this is the best one. Yeah, I love it. This is like, this is a real reserve. That's what it feels like, right? I've actually never seen this before. Yeah. Like the leaves here, look, you can see yeah, them Yeah, because off. you shook it, you shouldn't yeah, yeah. shake it like that. So we just leave right. it here, yeah. let it sit, yeah. and then yeah. you can drink it. Yeah. So what are don't these? Don't shake it, man. No, not shaking, but what, are, what is this? They're both, they're 17 vintage. This is a Chinuri and Gororinzo. The one we tried there was 19. Mm -hmm. I said it's like very typical, topical, right? So that's the one, but 17. And this is from Pakurtsiche, uh, Uroebi, my famous. I need food, like right now. Yeah, me too. Let's go. Let's go. I told you. See? It's coming. Hello. We got chakapuli. We have a salad with eggplant stuffed. Oh my God, stuffed the walnut paste. Incredible potatoes. We have bread and we're also getting a kachapuri, the best one on the planet. That's what he's saying. Oh man, but this is my favorite dish. And this is a beef, and you actually added some chili in there? Whoa. Yeah, it's tremale, these sour plums. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the best dish for a hangover. It is the ultimate dish. Yeah. Mm. Before I jump on that, I'm gonna eat one of these eggplants, because mm -hmm. this is like, mm -hmm. I mean, I know the eggplants in Armenia are amazing, but here, adding that walnut paste, wow, different thing. It's so mm. Yeah, and you also added pomegranate on top, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. A little spicy. A lot spicy. A lot spicy, yeah. Mm. And has been saying I'm gonna eat the best food ever here. Hmm. I wish I was staying here. Do you have a room for me? Yeah. For sure, right? Find the corner. <laughs> oh my god. Mmm. Hmm. Nice. Some seeds, some bones. We're super earthy. A little bit of fat. So Andrew was saying the butchers he buys from, they tell him exactly what these cows ate their whole life, which is basically grass-fed, organic. Oh, and the best is right here, the rib and the fat. Let's pull out that bone marrow. Wow, so earthy. No? My favorite dish here in Georgia is this one, chakapuli. My friend, I'm so happy. Oh, me too, man. Cheers. Try this one. 
is now quite aged, you know, it's uh, almost four mm. years old. Mm. We've only amazing. been together for one hour. He's already like my my older brother here. <laughs> Me, I mean, I feel the same, man. Thank really. you, thank you. And I thank you for the hospitality. The food is amazing. The wine, oh, this is gonna be the best. You will see the next wine. Oh, my <laughs> man. This is too good. From Chin Chin. No, dude, thank God, thank God. That's the deal. This is my favorite of them all, man. You will see the next one. Oh, the next one? So it's 2017? <laughs> Both. Both 2017? Yeah. Mm. Nice. Oh, and the potatoes with dill. Mm. And the salad. Wow, capers, beans, tomatoes. And John Jolly, which is the mm. main thing there. It says it's a pickled flowers, you know? Mm -hmm. I love John Jolly. I John eat like, nice like forever. Even the concept of John Jolly is nice, right? Mm -hmm. John Jolly is some, it's, it's a little bush with, and, and we pickle its, its flowers. This is what a delicious Cheers. summer salad, guys. Got your booty. Cheers! <laughs> I ate way too much salad, but I'm ready for this kachapuri. Wow. It's still so hot. The dough's soft, cheese is oozing out. The ultimate kachapuri. This one. Wow. Like it? I yeah. love it, man. The cheese is so fresh. Must be. Mm hmm. I wasn't going to eat this much, but. Go, 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 yeah, go, 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 Mm. It's uh, a little bit of old cheese as well with this because I feel it. Mm -hmm. So it makes sure a fresh nice cheese. It. You feel it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What I feel is love. Mm, love is there nah. all the time. That's so good. Let's drink for love, right? Without yeah. love, nothing else would exist. Absolutely. Come on, Jos. Come on, Jos. Come on, Jos. Saka for us, go on, Jos. America for go on, Jos. Hungary for go on, Jos. This wine is my most celebrated wine. Talk about Andro like a, as a winemaker, you talk about this wine mostly. Hmm. Right, now we taste and tell me. I mean, if you come with these two, which of it is better? Anyway, this, this tastes more like Tokai. Tokai? Right. This tastes more like, like that. Yeah, a little sweeter. Mm -hmm. That was excellent. It's excellent. Good wine. And what does a bottle cost? This bottle is for 18 euros. The, the previous one for 14. These are all good wines. These are like great wines. No, wait. I, I will give you a bottle, but don't, <laughs> don't, don't give you it to, to Nika. No, I keep it. I keep it. How many bottles is that? It's like 15. You don't have to. Oh, gosh. This one. You know, in the beginning, it has the, the, the tones of uh, uh, the beeswax and the apricot. What? Okay. But in about maybe half an hour, this apricot disappears a little bit and the, the, the beeswax starts to develop, you know? And you even keep, you, you can keep even the empty glass, you know, for an hour or two or three, just go back and smell. It becomes like striking, you know, like very, very strong. Thank you, bro, thank you. <laughs> you don't have to, man. Beeswax, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, man, take it. <sighs> thank you so much. Okay. 17 Chinurian uh, Zwan, so you will drink together. Perfect. Thanks so much. Okay. Thanks Thank so you. Much. My man. What a gangster. This is the best guy ever. He's so funny. Thank <laughs> you again, <laughs> man. Thank you. <laughs> Wine artisans right there. Wine artisans, yes. We have too many bottles. <laughs> We've got so many bottles, man. Oh, too many, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Never too ones. many bottles. Never. Yeah. You're too much, bro. Take care. <laughs> All right. All right. Peace, man. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. All right, David, uh, we've got about 20 minute drive to the next place. Uh, let's check it out. So next up, we're going to a guest house in Ateni, which is the main town in the Ateni Valley, wine region. And what's the name of the guest house? We're going to Nika Vacheishvili's guest house. So I have no idea what to expect. We're gonna meet the owners, we're gonna eat. I'm sure we're gonna have some drinks, but luckily for us, we're staying there. It's uh, 6.30, this is only a 10 minute drive, 10, 15 minute drive. There's like a little uh, church above the town, which is really beautiful. We might stop if we do have light, and then we're going to the guest house, eat, and just relax, you know? This is the day. I wanted to take it easy because the past few days I've been on a run, and uh, yeah, I just gotta enjoy myself, right? I've broken way too hard. Okay, more vines. More village, more beauty. This is Georgia. You gotta love it. In this village, all you see is vines. Like a billion vines. They even have like constructions that go over the road full of vines. 
This town is just like non-stop vines. Vines, houses, vines, houses. A few wineries here and there. But now we're super deep into the valley over here to the left. Uh, monastery, more rooftops, right? Mm -hmm. And then the mountain range. Incredible. And obviously, uh, we're in summer. But because we're in the valley, sun sets a little earlier because we have mountains. Whoa, this is like a, a pass here. It's the Ateni Monastery from the 8th century. So this is the uh, Ateni Monastery or the Ateni Sioni Church. It's one of the oldest and most holiest uh, churches in Georgia. It's dating from the uh, seventh or eighth century, uh, located in this like stunning location of the Ateni Valley. And this is what a typical church looks like, or a typical monastery looks like here in Georgia. Really beautiful, orthodox, a little different from the orthodox in Russia, where usually it's like three domes, this is one dome. Look at this, I mean, incredible valley, beautiful mountains. I mean, this is completely different from anywhere else we've been to in Georgia so far. Very diverse. We were really hot, now we're cold again. Yeah, amazing. Well, absolutely beautiful. Unfortunately for us, the inside is locked. Obviously, it's already like seven at night. But as you can see, beautiful monastery. Huge bricks, look at this, incredible. You have a few different types of bricks here. Like, this one has a design. I think it's like a, a lamb, somebody milking lamb, slaughtering a pig or something. I have no idea what that is, but over here, we have more views of the valley, and that's the main town right there. This is Ateni Village right here. That's basically it for the monastery. Let's get to the guest house. All right. Well, we were walking out, and then the guy who has the key came, and he's like, you want to see it? Yes, I want to see it inside of the church, for sure. This is amazing. My favorite church so far in Georgia. So we have frescoes everywhere, right? Beautiful old structures, and you walk in, it's dark. Turn on the lights, and you can see all the frescoes. Wow, so it's at two different periods, right? Yeah, so some frescoes are from the seventh century when this church was originally built, and some were added in the 11th century. Wow. So we have like Jesus, the Archangel, Mary, I mean, a few different things from the Bible over there, again. Jesus. So we have like the front of the church with the different icons. Uh, we have Saint Nino, one of the main saints of Georgia who preached Christianity here. Well, now you know. When you come to this area, you have to visit this monastery. <sighs> My favorite, dude. This is like, you're walking back in time here. Absolutely. Ateni Sioni. And now, we're off to Nika Facilevilis. So it's a wine cellar as well. A guest house and wine cellar. That means food and wine. Dude, what is this? We gotta do a river crossing. What? A river crossing, straight through the river right now. All right? Yeah. Four by four? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> We did it. <laughs> hello, hello. How are you? Your friend kept us drinking. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Everything okay? Yeah, no, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Nice to meet you. Okay. So like I said before, it's a wine cellar, but also a guest house. They have 13 rooms and we're gonna go into room number... Which one I want? Please. <laughs> Let's go number two. And this is one of the rooms. So here we have two twin beds, we have towels, we have a small desk, and then the bathroom. Wow, nice, nice. So like here it's like colorful, modern, very nice, clean, right? And then over here it's more like rustic, alpine, like mountain. I mean, this is amazing. I can't wait to sleep here. To be honest, I can't wait to eat here. This is gonna be great up here in the valley. And then over here we have, you know, place to relax, just chill. And then upstairs we have a few more rooms. Let's go see those. And the top level is seven through 13. And here we go. So this room is very similar to the one at the bottom, but a bit larger, right? So right when you enter, you have the bathroom over here. Same, right? Same layout, just flipped. And then over here to the end, you have a queen size bed. Here again, the towels and we have the view. Diana, I love this. So you open for the balcony and you have a screen. So you wanna leave this open all night, no bugs will come in, no birds will come in, no animal, just breeze, right? Okay, I think it's time for some food and some wine. <laughs> so what are we doing? Let's continue with Jaja. Jaja? -ja. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I thought the wine was over. <laughs> okay, let's go. Accommodations, and then you walk to the right, and over here, they have non-stop bottles of wine. They have an area to eat over here, a beautiful terrace with the garden, the views. This is wine cellar and... Uh... So wine cellar, yeah. over here we have a place to eat, right? Beautiful terrace, and then... Just more, oh my God, cha-cha everywhere. 
Cha-cha factory. Cha-cha factory. <laughs> I gotta show you this. So she just brought me a picture of what the valley looked like about uh, 2010, so 11 years ago. They bought the land and then they bought a few houses in the area that were just basically just ruins. They took all the materials, they brought it here and they built this property. Yeah. Wow. So we just entered heaven. <laughs> I don't know this place. <laughs> oh man, and another incredible wine cellar. Look at this. So we have stainless steel tanks, we have bottles, we have jugs, lots of wine. So how many wines do you produce? We have approximately 500 bottles. 500 bottles. And so how many different wines? So we have uh, several vineyards. So we produce from one vineyard, one type of wine. We don't mix vineyard together. So These are indigenous grapes from the area, right? Exactly, yes. Gavardos. <laughs> <laughs> Gavardos. I haven't drank today. 62 degree, approximately, yes. 60? Yeah. More or less. <laughs> That's rocket fuel. <laughs> wow. Strong. Strong. To the moon. To the moon and back. This is why I came to Georgia for the people. Woo. These vines just got me stuck. Swogging through the vineyard. Look at this. Incredible. It's just grapes, right? Beautiful. It's had an amazing day, my friends. It's been a, it's been a wild uh, week here. Beautiful place. The one thing I got to tell you, though. Be really careful here in Georgia. I mean, people will offer you alcohol, you know, cha-cha and wine because that's what they produce, what they have. So they want to, you know, welcome you with open arms. And um, I'm, I'm super, super happy for what I've experienced so far. It's been an epic journey. And I can't wait to enjoy this food right now. Can't wait to try some of the wine and sleep like a baby because right now it's only 8 p.m. So by 10, I'm asleep. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Okay, let's go eat. Tim, what are we having tonight? Uh, looks like we got a super nice light supper. So we got salad, uh, we got uh, beets uh, cooked in plum sauce. Super nice. This is gonna be a carrot salad with some kind of a sauce and uh, walnuts. Um, some local cheese probably. And this looks like it's mixed fried vegetables. Uh, eggplants uh, and green peppers mostly. We're gonna have some cha-cha, but you know what? We're gonna start with some white wine. What is this? This is Atenuri, name of this wine. So it's a blend of two types of grapes, Chinuri and Goruli. Gavarjos. Gavarjos, we are meeting. Good luck to you guys. I appreciate it, thank you so much. Mm. Oh, it's nice, light. It like hugs your lips, you know, like, mm -hmm. wow. It's delicious. This is from Italy. Oh, I mean, this was made in clay pot, right? Always in clay pot. Okay, guys, I have a few different things here, right? I have chakrakina, which is beetroot leaves, uh, cheese, dough, and a few different herbs. Then over here, we have the best thing ever, beetroot. Oh, this is gonna be so good. Over here, we have eggplant, we got some onions, so it's like a mixed salad, right? And then over here, this is carrots with plum, right? Wow. I'm starting off with this amazing chakrakina. 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 Mm. Yeah. Mm. Oh, a few different herbs in here. Wow, I love the beetroot leaves. Cheese, soft dough. I don't even know what to tell you. Like, it's just too good. Mm. I love how you make into it like a sandwich, you know? I can eat like 10 of these. This is gonna be the best, I know it. My food is the best. We haven't had this one. Yeah, this is super nice. Like they cook it like with the with the tremales with the wild plums, and it gets like this amazing sour flavor. Mmm. I didn't know it was a plum. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a little sour. Still a little crunchy as well. Mm -hmm. Hope And this said, "I'm gonna love so carrots and plum." Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> nice, so it's like a creamy salad, you know? Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, I love all these flavors. I'm gonna mix a little bit. Mm hmm. No sour. More? <laughs> so, you wanted to finish the wine so you can bring more? <laughs> Something you have to know about Georgia. You will drink until you drop. 
stuff on Oh man, they yeah. love their wine here, and they, they love, love their guests, and like uh, no, they they give a guest a lot of wine. That's like the the the, the ultimate goal. Yeah. Of, of it's like the ultimate hospitality, right? Yeah, absolutely, they give absolutely. you what they got. Absolutely, love. yeah, Always. whatever they have. So this is eggplant, right? Eggplant. Mm. Creamy, a little crunchy with the onions. What else? We have red pepper in here. So that's yeah, awesome red pepper. Let's go see what Nika's doing. Yeah, let's go. Sorry. This is really the ultimate, the ultimate hospitality. Drinking wine directly from their barrels, steel tanks. This is why Tim ended up here 10 years ago. Absolutely. He fell in love with this country. Absolutely. With food like this, you gotta fall in love. Our ingredients to you and me. Amor man. Thank you. To you and me to this place. Wow, the contrast is so unique. Mm -hmm. What are you playing? I'm playing backgammon. I was doing good, but I messed up. I messed up one thing and now I'm in trouble. <laughs> Don't know how to play this game, but in Armenia and in Georgia, they love it. And you can buy like the beautiful carved ones, right? This is, this is carved too? I'm sure it's carved. They're, they're gorgeous. I just have no idea how to play the game. I have time for wine. Let's go. I love that. Every time somebody orders a glass of wine, he comes and he gets a jug directly from the stainless steel tanks. This is insane. Red wine. Before breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it guys, we did it. We came to this incredible valley. What's the name of the valley? I forgot. Atani Valley. Atani Valley, okay. And then we went to Wine Artisans. We went we to had, Arda, yeah. We had an amazing time with our boy Andrew. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're, we're slowly walking over to our room. We tried his wines, like, I don't even know. I think it was like 12 wines or something. Incredible amount of wines. Absolutely. We had food. And then after that, we came over here. We 20 minute drive. To uh, Nika Bache's guest house, yeah. Yeah. We came here, before that we stopped at that beautiful monastery, the most incredible monastery I've seen in Georgia, like straight up out of a movie, like seventh century, beautiful frescoes. And then we came here and we had an incredible experience, right? Like everybody's yeah, super um, nice. Yeah, we drank a lot of wine, drank a lot of cha-cha, and uh, here we are. What? This is yeah. Georgia, right? That's, that's how it is, that's how it is here. Like, when you come here, like, they're gonna give you lots of wine, lots of cha-cha. If you love this video, please give me a thumbs up and comment below. Subscribe to this channel for more awesome travel content. And if you like alcohol, <laughs> let's go. Good morning everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Bin here coming at you from Gori, the largest city in the Kartli region here in the Republic of Georgia, only a one hour drive west from Tbilisi. Today I'm going to show you everything you have to see in the city, from the fortress to the bazaar and we're even going to an ancient cave city. I'm excited, I'm pumped, 8 in the morning, let's get it done. Good morning dude. Yo, what's up? So what's up with this place? So this is the Gori Fortress. Uh, it's been a, uh, it's a hill on top of the city. It's been fortified since ancient times, basically. But the present form that you see is dating back to the 18th century when it was reconstructed. 18th century fortress. I mean, it looks medieval, obviously. Stone structure, huge, right over the entire city. So this is Gori, all of this, right? Yeah. And so where's Stalin's uh, museum? So like when we get up to the top, we'll see the rest of the city. We're seeing one half right now. Like the port is like, like right in the middle of the city. So when we get on, on top, we'll see on the other side where Stalin's uh, house was. Stalin, dictator of the USSR. He was born here in Gori. Incredible, I had no idea. It's been a struggle this morning, I'm trying to wake up. I haven't seen too many fortresses like this, right? So you got small stones, big stones, oh, big boulders. Wow. Woo! Here in the center we have like an ancient well, huge cistern, right? This is where they collect water. Always need a source of water. And over here we have the views of Gori. It's Gori directly in the center. You have epic views, wow. It's incredible, only a one hour drive from Tbilisi, easy day trip. I'm excited for the whole day, it's gonna be great. That's basically it for the Gori Fortress, right? Incredible views. You can see the fortress from the entire city. 
you have more walls over here which actually like extends down to the ground which I, I didn't see that before and that's it for the Gori Fortress ancient well beautiful walls incredible views and we're ready to go to the bazaar right, let's go let's go Kachapuri 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 I need Kachapuri right now cheese bread coffee that's all we need yeah. can't wait the bazaar I'm sure we'll find a lot of food Whew, and this, this is a hike it's a little windy today love the oxygen though a little overcast perfect because yesterday was boiling here boiling so Tim what is this old glory yeah so this is the old center of town now the town's of course grown a lot bigger they restored a lot of houses around here like we have here like uh, what used to be the, uh, the Catholic Church now it's been like a uh, being used by the Orthodox Church. Yeah, so it's Saturday morning, you know, everybody's slowly waking up. It's really early in the morning. If we're gonna go to the bazaar, I'm sure it's gonna be packed. Bazaars are always like chaos, right? Like everybody's everywhere. You know, they're selling cheese, wine, cha-cha, fruits, vegetables, and that's basically how bazaars are here in Georgia. Sometimes they have clothing, like flea market style. Sometimes they don't have any of that, right? It's just basically produce. And this is the Stalin Museum. If you guys don't know, Stalin, brutal dictator from the USSR, was born in this city. So basically what they did is they transported his old house to here. They also put his, uh, so his train, his like private train, right? Uh, the train car that he used to travel in, like all around the USSR, like they put it right here on like a little special rail. They built a whole uh, museum uh, where you can like see like memorabilia from, from Stalin's life. And yeah, like uh, obviously a brutal dictator, but uh, people from this town are proud of the fact that, that uh, he was born here and he came from here. We're not gonna go inside, but this is it, right? Stalin Museum. And this is Stalin's massive cart, number 3878. So he traveled all around the USSR in this. Uh, if you guys don't know the history, it was Lenin and Stalin. Lenin passed away, Stalin continued for like 30 plus years, and he ruled the USSR. This is the museum. We have the building here. We have the train cart which is incredible. I can't even believe they brought that here. And this is Stalin's home, just an ordinary village house, right? So he was born here. He became one of the most powerful men in the world, ruled for three decades, insane. And yeah, I mean, they basically brought it, took it apart and put it back together here, right? Yeah. So it's made of bricks, you got wood. So from the side, it just looks like a, a wall, right? From over here. But then you walk this side and you have a terrace. You have the entrance and then you have basically the cellar down there. Yeah. All right, so it says like he was born here in 1879 and he lived here until 1883, so until he was four years old. After that, he moved to town and uh, grew up to be one of the most powerful men in the world. Are you hungry or what? Uh, I'm so hungry. Just had one coffee this morning, nothing else. Going straight to the bazaar. For now we're entering the Gori Bazaar, so big market. This is more like a flea market mixed with produce. And you were saying that it burned down recently. Yeah, so I recently, apparently there was a fire and the bazaar burned down. Uh, so I'm not sure like how much we're gonna see, but let's, let's check out and see, uh, see, we'll see what there is. Well, it's very unfortunate the bazaar burned down. So there's only a few vendors here. They're selling books, clothing, toys. And that's basically it. Look, you got some Avengers in, uh, in Georgian, right? And uh, I think we're just gonna keep walking around and see what else we can find, but really really unfortunate this is what happens right when you're traveling only those things happen all the time to get ready for that and uh okay well i mean there's some people over there in the street so basically they moved the market to the street right that's what happened yeah so you have watermelons melons just fruit vendors wow dude it's crazy how many are there it looks like they have all these like stands on the street with different fruits and vegetables they sent us over here they said the bazaar is not over here anymore, so like, let's, let's check it out. We've been walking around for like 15 minutes, checking out all these different vendors, but it's basically like a flea market here on the road. I mean, you have just clothing, shoes, glasses, you know, watermelons, and uh, and more fruits, right? Look at this. Yeah, these guys with all these, look at this. Yeah, the brooms as well. So we're just gonna keep walking, and hopefully we find some food. I'm extremely hungry, already 10.30 in the morning. My man, this is crazy. Yeah, yeah, like, uh, so like, I knew a, a bazaar over here, but apparently it burned down, so we're gonna, they said they like, moved it to a different part of town, we're gonna see if we can find it. Yeah. So when it burned down, everybody just moved over here to the street, and then they also have another section somewhere else in town. We're gonna look for it, hopefully we find it. Oh. The guy's telling us it's like two or three kilometers away, right? Three kilometers. One, well, the one lady said 200 meters, he, and now he said three kilometers. Crazy. It's all good. We're making it for you. 
the old bazaar burnt down by the bus station in the center of town. Now the new bazaar is next to the new bus station. This is it right here. We finally found it. I mean, we've been driving around for like 20 minutes, but this is the bazaar. It says bazaar right over there, and there's a lot of vendors, so we'll see what we find. Look at this. Hello, hello, hello. Looks like they have, looks like they have the Tony Slobiani as well, like the, the bean the bean bread like baked in, in the Tony. We're gonna buy some bread, and the lady's like, you know what, no. Our gifts. Just give us some sweet bread. So it's sweet. It's called kata. It's like a, a, a kind of a sweet bread. We're gonna try some sweet bread. Mmm. So sweet. Whoa, look at that dough. This is fantastic. Fluffy. Super sweet. I don't even know what's in here. It tastes like sugar. Yeah. Uh, I think it's sugar and I think maybe some almond paste as well, which they, they often put in the sweet bread. This is a crazy oven. It's like like a little ferris wheel right so it just keeps going up she has like stones there she puts three pieces of bread she moves it up it bakes sits there party for like 10 20 minutes and it's ready and she just keeps going non-stop that bread was so good man mm, super sweet incredible so this is lubiani lubiani mm. so it's a bean filling mm -hmm. nice mm. Smoky dough, love it. A little chard, a little bit of spice, a little bit of pepper. That's the best way to have the bean filling. It's like a little bit of cake. Yeah, it's what I love about all these different pies here in uh, Georgia. They always add a little bit of pepper, make it a little spicy. While I'm sitting here eating this amazing bread, all the other bread keeps finishing and they keep pulling it out, right? Just doesn't stop. She just keeps putting it in and pulling out. Mm. Do you like beans? Mmm. This is the ultimate bean bread. Mmm. Though it's got hit with a kick. These people are too nice. They're like, you have to try our bread straight out of the oven. It is so hot. Ooh, I can't even hold it. Mmm. Oh. Crunchy, fluffy. Let's talk about the bread in this country. So much bread. Wow, it's still boiling. I'm gonna have one last bite and we're out of here. Mm. Best bread of my life. Maluba. 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 This family's too nice. So kind. They gave me the bread. They're like you have to eat it. It's free. It's on the house. Oh. That was phenomenal. So good, really hot, perfect. And as you can see, that bakery is super popular. There's a person there every minute just asking for more and more bread. And that, that's just a uh, regular bread, right? That's not katapuri. It's regular, fluffy, delicious bread. The Tony Slobiani, the, the bean bread made uh, in, in, the same, in the same way. And after all this searching, we found the bazaar. So this is a new bazaar. It's covered. You have different sections, right? Over here, we have different tools. Over here we have fruits, vegetables, and then over there it's like more like a flea market, right? But it's basically it's empty right now. Not so many people. It's yeah. a cold Saturday morning, mm -hmm. which is so weird because yesterday was so hot. Yeah, people but, uh, still uh, working off their hangovers. <laughs> yeah, in this country, 100%. And uh, yeah, I guess we're just gonna walk around a little bit, see what we can find, maybe some more food. If not, we're going straight to the ancient cave city. Super nice lady. She's like bringing the walnuts, right? Packing them open. And she's letting us try. Mm. Eat this all day. This is like the king of walnuts is Georgia, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Yeah. So walnuts is a super important part of Georgian cuisine. Uh, you can find it in the salads and the meat dishes and like all different kinds of dishes. Like, wal like they're always putting in walnuts. My favorite walnut, I guess, dish is the eggplant with walnut paste. That's mm -hmm. the best one. Absolutely. But I'm gonna take one more, my friend. Come on, John. Come on, Josh. <laughs> this lady is too much. She's like, do you want some wine? I'm like, I guess I'll try. I'll try a little glass. It's fine. It's already almost noon. Had a lot of walnuts, a lot of bread. And look right here. We have the dried chilies. Sun-dried. Oh, I love these. They're not so spicy though. My friend, Camajos. Oh, nice, nice. This is super young wine. Like Australian juice. 
My friend here is coming up to me. Look at his eyes. Gorgeous eyes. Whoa. Blue eyes. Very good. <laughs> and the next vendor has sala, so basically pork belly. Looks good. And this one is like filled with spices, chili. Wow. I'm in awe with this one. I can't wait. Oh my god. Mm. Super spicy. Red pepper. Mm -hmm. Chili. I guess I need some bread with this. Sorry, take some bread, take some bread. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Got a side idea. Good job. Right, Aside from uh, selling all this stuff yeah. in the bazaar, this guy also repairs sewing machines. This guy is the man. And at, at Liverpool, what Liverpool. No, Arsenal, Arsenal, Arsenal. <laughs> Carmar Jos. Oh my God. <laughs> it's a joke? Bottle number 15 or 18? <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Everywhere I go, they feed me wine. wine. Can you believe this? <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Thank you, Maglova, Maglova. This is why I love coming to bazaars. The people treat you like straight up family, like a king, right? Exactly. So we got wine, we tried bread, and uh, we didn't pay. Obviously, we gave them some money, we tipped, but they didn't accept any of that. But it's all good. You know, we're gonna drink this maybe tonight. And now we're going over to the cave. Uh, cave city so it's like the the biggest city in georgia in ancient times yeah it was a really big city in georgia in ancient times like royals lived there they they ruled the country from there it's called uplis tiche which means a uh, fortress of the, the lords basically and where is it so it's outside of town like around like five ten kilometers from the photos i've seen it looks like you know cave cities in cappadocia very similar but obviously this is georgia very different let's go and this is it, the most visited site in Gori, the cave town of Uplistihe. Uplistihe. Yeah, so super hard to say. Yeah, really hard to say. Costs 15 gel to get in, so that's roughly, uh, I think, five US dollars, yeah. right? And what are we seeing here? It was destroyed by invaders, there was an earthquake, so a lot of it collapsed, so it's mostly ruined now, uh, but there's still uh, a church left on top. And over here, before we go up, there's a map, shows you everything they got, right? So the main road, fortification, grand gate, main tower. Man, there's a lot of things to see here, right? So we're just gonna walk around and explore it. Let's go. Okay, so once you enter the main gate, you have this massive staircase going over these huge boulders. So a few different structures and then caves. Whew, gotta be fit to go up here. Yeah, man, it's a big climb. Uh, yeah, and bring some water and good hiking shoes. Okay, so this is the top. We have a few of the different cave dwellings here. We have a church above us. And luckily for us, it's not a hot day. It's a little chilly. It's perfect because if you come here in the summer, it's gonna be like a desert, right? You got incredible views. You got vines over there. And over here, we have the caves. And these are a few of the cave dwellings, right? Right. So this is basically where the terrace was, obviously. Mm -hmm. Looking over the valley. Mm -hmm. And over here is where they would sleep. Wow, it's like a natural staircase here on the rock. Whoa. See so you have the cross here. Dude, this is crazy. So most of the structure was destroyed during an earthquake, right? Yeah, yeah. So you can see like some of these pillars here, this complex is still very unstable. So like they've like built some things up to help protect it and to keep it from collapsing more. So it was an ancient city, but its height was during medieval times, like 12th century. Yeah, exactly. This, this place was inhabited like from uh, even before Christ. The reason why they built stuff like this is because they wanted to hide basically hide from invaders. Yeah, right? it, was a, it was a really good uh, way of defense, like living in these caves like on, on, a, on a rock like this. Yeah, so yeah. you can see everything, right? It's like a natural fortification. Right? Exactly. So walking through, and let's go to the top. Wow, it does remind me of Cappadocia. Certain things, you know? Cappadocia is a little different though. Cappadocia is more like caves underground, like tunnels. This is just like this is this is cut out of the, out of the mountain. Like yeah. you, can, you can even see like you can see the old chisel marks. As you make your way up, as you can see it's very steep. It's a little slippery. Oh man, yeah, I'm super uneven. Yeah, you gotta watch your feet. Gotta watch your feet over here yeah. to the right. We have more caves, so all housing over here as well. And we have it's basically a few cisterns, right? So mm -hmm. water deposits. Yeah, exactly. So like a place like this, so like no natural water source, so they would have to store water in the ancient times. Like, you look around, like there's like, the caves left and right. Like and this, these all would have been parts of the complex where people lived or were working or, or doing stuff. And right in front of us, we have the church. Let's go to the top. This is uh, Queen Tamar's Hall. So Queen Tamar was uh, one of the most important rulers of Georgia back in the Golden Age in the 12th century. 
Um, so you can see, like, uh, it might have would have once come out as far as here, but like most of it's collapsed, and so there's a, a small part surviving uh, in the back. Obviously, the cave part survived. The roofing went because that was all wood, mm -hmm. but they re rebuilt some of the walls, right? So with stone. So you see Queen Tamara's Hall, and that was the the queen that they call king. Yeah. So they, right? the Georgians actually call her King Tamar because she was such an important ruler that she gave her they gave her the title of the king instead of a queen. Yeah. She became queen or king when she was six years old. So she exactly. started really early, and she lived for a long time. Yeah. The uh, end of the 12th, the beginning of the 13th century. And right next to King Tamar's Hall, we have her wine cellar and we have the ancient remains of the Cuevides, right? So the huge clay pots right there. That's insane. Yeah, so you can see like this is like such a traditional part of a uh, Georgian culture. Like you go to like these ancient monuments and they all have like these Cuevides like left over. Remember, Georgians basically were the birthplace of wine, right? Birthplace of wine. So they created a wine, 8,000 year tradition, the Cuevides. Very different from European wines. You can see this would have been a church at one time. It's entirely fallen down from the from the earthquake. You can see here like the front of the church where they would have had the iconostasis, and you see like these four places here. They would have had pillars there, like holding up the roof. We just hiked up to the very top to get an epic view over the entire complex. Beautiful, the valley, the river, the church, all the cave dwellings, and you can explore here like one, two hours. Just you know, very similar. Yeah, you can you can go around like there's all these uh, caves like cut out of the rocks uh, where people used to live and do stuff yeah and if you're ever heading to Batumi heading west from Tbilisi it's only a, like a 90 minute drive from Tbilisi to Gori you can come here see the fortress go to the bazaar see the Stala Museum and then come to this complex and guys if you love this video please give me a thumbs up leave me a comment below subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content see the next travel food adventure in Georgia and it's starting the poor cats and dogs look at this so wet let's go all right What's up everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Vineyard coming at you from the road in the beautiful Republic of Georgia. Today I'm so excited because I am headed to one of the largest cities in the western side of Georgia. It's called Kutaisi. There we're gonna explore, see the main square, you know, church, we're gonna eat some kebabs. But right now we're stopping at a famous village for some sweet bread. Tim, what is this? So this is the town of Surami. Uh, it's basically exactly halfway between Tbilisi and the west. So it's a, the, at this halfway point, people stop and they buy sweet bread. And after this, we go up over the pass and into West Georgia. And there's a lot of women selling sweet bread on the road right here. As you can see, like 20 vendors. But the one you have to go to is this one. This one is specifically because it's the most famous one and it's the yummiest. Sergo is the name of the shop. Mmm. Oh man. There's like raisins in here, right? Yeah. Mm hmm Nice fluffy. Little chart on the outside. So you can see raisins. So open it up. Mm-hmm. Oh it's super sweet. Oh it's phenomenal. So this is the stuff you have to do on the way to Kutaisi. It's only like, you know, so it's halfway there, right? So you still have like a 90 more minutes. Yeah, something like that. Mm-hmm. Mmm. I must try. Let me get some of that. Super nice. That's the best part. It's super fresh, right? They literally just did it. Baked in the tone. Mm. Nothing like a tandoor. Mm -hmm. Nothing like it. Absolutely. Let's go. When you visit Georgia, you're gonna eat a lot of bread. Mm-hmm. Always eat the bread from the tuna. Always. The best. Mm. So besides the sweet bread, they also knit hammocks. They sell hammocks on the side of the road. They also prepare a special kind of chewing gum from uh, pine resin, which uh, I really like. I have a tradition, I chew it every time I drive this pass. So this tunnel is the official boundary between East and West Georgia. We've just crossed into West Georgia, the region of Imereti. So that's it. Once you cross that long tunnel, obviously went through a huge mountain. You're in West Georgia. Amazing. And we're going to be out here for the next uh, four or five days, exploring Kudaisi and then going down to Batumi. I'm excited, I'm pumped, can't wait. I need some food right away. I heard about these incredible kebabs. There's like a huge line outside the door in Kudaisi for this one place. It's kebabs and beer, that's it, right? Yeah, well you have two options. You have kebab and beer, you can have kebab and soda, so. 
So Tim was telling me that this side of the country is a little warmer and the landscape is very different. It's instead of it being like valleys and huge mountains, it's more like hilly, right? So, you know, small hills, you have villages here and there and right now they're expanding the highway. That's why there is a bit of a traffic jam, but now it's cleared up and we're gonna make it straight over there roughly in around an hour. Hopefully we see something else along the road. If not, straight to eat. All right, so we're coming into Kutaisi. Uh, there's two different sides to Kutaisi. There's a more built up modern area, which was built by the Soviets uh, when they made Kutaisi into an industrial center. And there's the older historical part, which is up nestled between uh, a couple different hills. So we're climbing up one of the hills on the backside and then we'll come down to the center. So it's taking around 90 minutes to get here. A bunch of traffic, because right now they're doing a lot of construction. They're building a few new roads. And yeah, I'm excited, I can't wait. I'm really hungry today. We've barely eaten just some bread and water. Woo! It's hot, it's really hot out here. Summer in Kutaisi, get ready to, for a scorcher. Yeah, that's true, it can, it can get really hot out here. First impression of Kutaisi, it reminds me of like Veliko Tarnovo in Bulgaria, obviously not their fortress, but around Veliko Tarnovo, it's very similar style, right? Like 19th century buildings, really colorful. Some of them obviously have been restored, some are original like that, like bricks, look at this blue house. We're coming down to the main square right now, but we're gonna check it out. So the name of the kebab place is Bikentia's uh, Kebabaria, and it's just here on the on this side of the historical center. And this is the main square of Kutaisi. So what's the story behind this fountain? So like here we have like some different animals, and these are all replicas of different archaeological things that have been found uh, from ancient times in Georgia. There's also like some motifs of the golden fleece, which uh, reflects the, the the legend of the golden fleece, which happened here in Georgia. Many people don't know that, but that was. Uh, Georgia's the land of the Golden Fleece. Okay. Yeah. So that's the square over yeah. here. Yeah, that's the theater over here. Okay. Um, over here, you have a headquarters of a bank. Here is the Central Park. A super nice place to relax on a hot day in Kutaisi. Okay, guys, let's go eat. I cannot wait for these kebabs. To get to the kebab place, we have to pass through the Central Park. Beautiful. It literally dropped 20 degrees from being out in the scorching sun to coming here. Look at this. You have fountains, you have sculptures, you have a lot of trees, and people just come here to relax, right? Exactly, exactly. When it gets really hot in the summer, people are coming here, they're chilling out, they're hanging out, they're with their kids, they're with their families. Yeah, it's a great spot. Oh, like here in the Central Park, you can weigh yourself for 30 Tetris. 30 Tetris? Yeah. So like uh, 10 cents. Hello, hello. It's okay, I'm gonna weigh myself. Obviously, I've gained like five kilos on this trip. <laughs> I'm up a little bit. It's all good though. Thank you so much. Maglaba. Does Dr. Strange live here or something? <laughs> Look at this. Uh, the opera house. This is the opera house? I mean, the, yeah. yeah, the design I'm just talking about. It's like the, the sanctum. The sanctum. Yeah. No, Amazing. Yeah. Taisi has a lot of the different theaters, uh, opera houses, uh, music places. Like, historically, Kutaisi was considered like the artistic capital of Georgia. So a lot of famous poets, musicians, and uh, artists came from here. All right, so this is the shop. So it looks like a Georgian tavern, right? So just, you know, some tables right here. Super cozy. Love it. Wooden tables. Beautiful. And what do we got? We have kebabs and we have beer. That's what we're getting. And maybe some bread. And here we go. Three kebabs each. Post up on this table. I'm excited. These are the best, right? Yeah, best ones in town. Two cold beers. Here we go. Ching ching. Cheers. Man, it's been a long road trip. Yeah. I need this. Okay, now for the main event. So, what do we have? We have onions, we have these are beef kebabs, right? And then we have like a, I don't know, like a tomato sauce? Yeah, it's like a spicy tomato sauce with different herbs. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the, you know, the minced meat is like breaded and battered and then fried. Oh man, it's gonna be so good. Mm -hmm. Mm. Bro, I might get two more. Wow. Mm. Super good. So different, right? These kebabs. It feels like they're lightly fried. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? They're meaty, super meaty. I think there's pork in here as well. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's a mix of pork and beef, but the sauce is what makes it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm. Oh, I love the salad. Mmm. So like long. Fresh onions, fresh coriander. Everything's so fresh. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so happy we came here. Mm -hmm. And usually there's a huge line out the door. Obviously, because of time, 
You know, I think it's like five right now. Yeah. The high point is like one, two in the afternoon. All the all the guys come in, like they get their kebabs, they have their lunch, working lunch. Mm. Down with beer. Mm. Mm -hmm. This is the best thing of all time. This is one of my favorite kebabs ever. Mm -hmm. Dude, the freshness, the sauce. Mm. There's some chili right there. Mm -hmm. wow. How about Joe's bro? Yeah, I'm Joe's, I'm Joe's, I'm Joe's. And this is the only thing on the menu. Yeah, this is why you have two choices. Kebab with beer, kebab with soda. Wow. Mm -hmm. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> I've eaten kebabs in the Middle East, in India, Pakistan, <laughs> where else? I mean, all over the Balkans as well, but I've never had it like this. I mean, the freshness of the salad, the tomato, what else can I tell you? I mean, the ingredients are super fresh, farm to table basically. This is the one thing I got, you have to come here. And if you finish all the sauce before you finish the kebabs, you have a cup with more sauce. You know, when I drink it. It's basically like a gazpacho. Similar gazpacho. Mmm. 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 Tim, maybe it was because we didn't eat, but probably my favorite meal of the trip. I'm getting two more. Yeah? Okay, can I go in the back? Woo! <laughs> My bad. You okay? Everything good? Mm -hmm. Magaria. 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 It's great. It's great. Oh, it's amazing. Hey, hey, hey. Magaria. Come on, Joss. Come on, Joss. Come on, Joss. Come on, Joss, guys. It's amazing. Magaria. It's good beer. Just like that, we're going for round two. Super nice people, so friendly. I was like, can I film in the back? He's like, yes, come in the back. That was awesome, just, you know, I'm enjoying this. Mm-hmm. Oh, good, Major, good. How's that food? Uh, I'll eat all of it, man. It's solid. My friend, thank you so much. Got my Joss. How about Joss? Got my Joss. No. We're cheering, cheering to a good life, right? Absolutely, and friendship. If you want to go crazy, just do what I do. Just add that spice, right? Mm -hmm. I love the spice. Wow. What a dish. If you don't have Kutaisi on your itinerary, I highly suggest you do it. You know, on the way to Batumi from Tbilisi, you gotta stop here. Especially for this dish. It's a must. Last amazing bite. But don't forget the salad. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love, love the vegetables and the herbs. The last one? Mm -hmm. So happy right now. Thank you for bringing me here, bro. Thank you so much. Got my jokes, got my jokes. Good to be here. And that's it, my friends. Cheers to this place. I'm gonna drink this up and go explore the city. For a beer, three kebabs, and bread, it's 14, roughly under five US dollars. One minute walk from the restaurant, we have the White Bridge. So there's three historical bridges, right? Yeah, there's three historical bridges in Kutaisi. The White Bridge, the Red Bridge, and the Chain Bridge. This is the White Bridge, and now it's a little pedestrian bridge you can use to get over from one part of the city to the next. The views from here are stunning, beautiful. Look, over here we have different pieces of the town. You have some restaurants, some bars, like overlooking the river, and on the bridge, you have an area where it's you know clear, but it's a little dirty. Obviously, you can't see through right now. And you also have some beautiful designs. So if we go this way, what's over here? The historical center and going into uh, the area on the other side of the river. And it's just uh, houses. So then next, we're gonna walk back through the town and then go all the way up to the cathedral. Yeah. All right, let's go. We just got in the car and we're leaving the historical center. We're gonna cross the chain bridge right now, this one. Yeah. And after the chain bridge, we made a quick left and you go along the river and then we're gonna make our way all the way up to the cathedral. This neighborhood's called Gora, which means hill. So like uh, historically it was on the other side of the river from the center of town and uh, lots of important people lived up here. I'm guessing it was the rich neighborhood, right? Yeah. Basically. I mean, a lot of the houses are like falling apart though. As you can see like, you know, little ruins here and there, yeah. but they all have epic views over the historical center. Look at that. Yeah. Wow. What a view. So from the top of the cathedral, we have the best views. Absolutely, absolutely. And this is the beautiful Bagratis Cathedral. As you can see, it's like 
old and restored. So what's the history? So this cathedral was originally built in the 11th century by King uh, Bagrat. That's why it was called Bagrati Cathedral. Uh, destroyed at the end of the 17th century by uh, an Ottoman army. Uh, and so like for centuries it was just laid in like this sort of like ruined state. Uh, and then starting in the middle of the 20th century, they started some reconstruction and this reconstruction was finished uh, in 2012. So this is basically brand new, right? On the left, you can see the old structure. Obviously over there is like a modern structure. That's a little weird they did that. Yeah. <laughs> and then over here we have the bell tower, right? Yeah. So for the bell tower, can we go up the bell tower or no? Well, I think we can walk up the side. Okay, well, let's go up there. I think from there we're gonna get even better views, right? Cause right here, we have a mini park, right? We have cars. A lot of tourists here, obviously. Wow, this is great though. Look at this. These are the old like pillars. This, this would have stood on the inside somewhere. You can see like some of the original stones are still like here in the building. Okay, gotta be careful. No railway. <laughs> okay, wow. Epic. If you're brave, come up here. I don't recommend it. <laughs> man, that's a big fall. Up. Yeah, it's high, it's high. high. I think it's like at least, oh man, 50 feet? Something like that. Yeah, big drop. All right, I'm going back down. But the views are great. Yeah, so that's like 25 feet, not 50, but still really high. If you got a vertical, don't go up there. Now let's go inside and see the old and new. Hat off. As soon as we entered the cathedral, church was in service. So out of respect, we didn't talk in there. Obviously, I wanted to show you the differences, right? So on the left and the right, you see you know, old and new, and then you have super new, like modern, right? And this was added in 2012 uh, when they finished. They put the roof back on, they put the dome back on. Before that, this place was just open air, but then they also added these like kind of iron constructions, which don't exactly fit with the, with the rest of the building. Just so you guys know, this used to be a UNESCO World Heritage Site, but the second they added this modern construction, UNESCO removed it from the list, sadly. Uh, the last thing we got to see, there's like a big iron cross right here, and there's some of the, the old walls of the fortification. This used to be the city fortification, so. Massive iron cross, and then in front of us, we have the walls and incredible views overlooking the city. I mean, this is where you have to come to get a view of Kutaisi. Yes, the cathedral is gorgeous, but this is a stunner. Tim, it's all worth it for this. You can like literally see the entire place, uh, the entire city from here. So like just down there is the central square where we were earlier, the central park. Um, the kebab shop will be over there somewhere. And you can see all the way out uh, here up in front, we have like still the older neighborhoods. And that's it, my friends. We explored Kutaisi. We actually started 90 minutes from here, coming from Gori. We stopped in a town to have some sweet bread, delicious with raisins. What's it called? Uh, the sweet bread itself is called Nazuki. The town is called Surami. Okay, and then from there, we came all the way over here. 90 minute drive through winding roads, mountains. They're actually building a tunnel, so eventually you'll be able to get here a lot faster. And yeah, what did we do? We saw the central square, central park. Uh, we went and had the best kebabs of my life. So good, beef, pork, tomato sauce with some salad, super, super scrumptious. After that, we walked over to the bridge, saw a bridge, got in the car, came all the way up here to this beautiful cathedral and got an incredible view over Kutaisi. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next one. Let's do it. <laughs>
Oh, look, so you got some plums, you got some oh, apples. Good, 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 good. good, 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 good. good. <laughs> he, he's, he's starting, right? He's oh, starting. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> hello, hello. Uh, hello, hello. Gouda. American. You love America, right? Oh, yeah. America good? Good, good, good. good. It's America, good. Ah. Gotcha, good. Gotcha, good. good. Gotcha, good. Gotcha, Yes, yes, yes. Hey, hey. <laughs> Look at the size of that watermelon. Massive. What is that? Three kilo? No, four kilo. Four kilo, okay. This is called a teddy bear Pomeranian. I have the same one. Mine's like 18 years old. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> See you guys later. See you later. Thank you. Maloba, Maloba, Maloba. <laughs> well, that was awesome. First vendor, mm -hmm. too friendly. Okay, so we have a few different lanes here. The main part's over here though, right? Yeah, so it goes here, then there's another section out here, there's another section out here, there's more sections over there. So it's a quite a big bazaar, actually. And what do you have here? So this lady has a few different spices. You have some chilies, cardamom, what else? Delicious stuff. I mean, the smells here, look at this. This is Fanetti and salt. So Fanetti is a region in northern part of Georgia, and they mix some herbs with salt. Mm. Oh, so salty. Oh. oh, too much. Mm. Now I need water. So we've got different kinds of beans here. I don't really know the differences between all these beans, but like they have a different flavor and a different way of preparation. So almost like a burgundy red, right? And some white. What are these? No idea. No smell here. Thank you. <laughs> maglobat, maglobat. <laughs> and then across from this vendor, we have more fruit vendors. So we got tomatoes, eggplant, cucumbers, and this is what we're gonna see, right? So lots of fruit vendors here. We got some beans. She, she wants me to try more stuff. Oh my God. She wants, to, she wants to give us something? She wants to give us something. Maglobat <laughs> Didi. I think it's the, the salt that you tried earlier. She, she gave us uh, some as a present. Maglobat, maglobat. Thank you so much. We're gonna have it later. Me, Miami. So I've been to many markets throughout Ukraine, Armenia, and now in Georgia, and they all are very similar in, in terms of like covered market, you know, high ceilings, usually all the fruit and, you know, the spice vendors are together, and then next level or next areas you have more like a flea market right so mm -hmm. it's not really used clothes that's all brand new clothes right yeah it could be it could be used it could be new uh it could be just knickknacks for around the house nice uh, yeah and then so it's like very yellow right so they painted it all yellow and then at the very end over here we have butchers we have more butchers over there too yeah i guess got, let's keep going yeah we've got a section for cheese somewhere we've got a section for dried fruits a section for pickles right here's my favorite part the chilies spicy spicy picante yeah maybe i'll have one later right now i'm good that's the spring onions you got lots of herbs lettuce uh, coriander as well we got garlic and these guys over here are cha cha they're drinking beer at 8 30 in the morning a perfect way to start the day right now i'm okay beer now no later <laughs> maybe some cha 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 for sure here we have a medicinal herb right don't know what it is. It looked like a big mushroom, but mm -hmm. I've never seen that before. Behind it, <laughs> we have some wine, local wine. So if you want some wine right now, you can just buy it right here from them. This is all produced at their home. We have some more garlic, some onions. And you know, this is what it is, local life. Right? You come in the morning, you get, you know, the freshest fruits and vegetables in the area. These, most of these people come from a little north of Kutaisi and they bring it from the foothills, right, of the mountain. I'm really hungry. I need a kachapuri, some cheese, and maybe a cha cha. That's the best way to start the morning, right? Flow. So I looked it up in the dictionary. This is called butcher's broom. And so she was explaining to me uh, that uh, the, it's good for all the different kinds of ailments. You can use it for like stomach problems, kidney problems, and uh, yeah, d different kinds of things you can prepare it. Now we're going up to the next section. Wow, so different, huh? It went from like old school, authentic, to like this huge hall. Cheese, okay, it's cheese. And over here we have a few of the butchers selling chicken. Dried fruits, so we got some nuts, uh, different spices. There's a pickle section around here somewhere as well. Yeah, this hall was just very recently redone, like maybe two years ago, like they repainted everything, like opened it up and yeah. Yeah, it looks very new, right? And super clean. I think we should try some cheese. Let's see, what do we got here? This is like a ricotta style, right? Oh yeah, so the, that's the naduhi, the ricotta style. Looks like they have a... That's like butter, no? This, this is pure butter. Pure butter. So what, what do you want to taste? This one right here. It's a naduhi. So this is cottage cheese. Mmm! Crumbly, so fresh, cold. Mmm! 
Like the ultimate paneer. Wow. Dude, I can eat that whole thing. <laughs> and over here, look at this. I think this is gonna be imeruli, like the local variety of cheese from this uh, from this region. Uh, this fresh style, mozzarella style cheese, yeah. Imeruli. Mm, a little salty, nice and dense. A little bit of air pockets in there. This is fantastic. How much for a block of that? So one kilo is uh, 12 lari. So like however like big these these big blocks are gonna be, they look like they're like four or five kilos at least. So like maybe like 50 or 60 lari. I think that's like uh, 20 US dollars roughly, right? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Kachapuri? Kachapuri? Yeah, you can make good kachapuri out of it. Yeah. And she wants to show us something over here. More spices, right? Yeah, more spices. So she's got this is my favorite. Oh, we fuck see like It's hot. It's hot. This is the same salt that the other lady showed us, but um, always everybody has a, has a different recipe for it. So the same thing like spaghetti with salt, right? Spaghetti and salt again, yep. Mm. This one's easier. Mm -hmm. It's not so salty. More herb, less salt. Mm. This mm. with like some chicken or some beef. Yeah. Oh, so good. Mm -hmm. Which is this one? This one is, a, is spicier. She said if you like spicy, you'll like this one. Hot. Okay. Hot. Oh, that's it. Hot. Not so hot. Me, I eat chili. Oh no, it's hot, it's hot. <laughs> oh, it hit you now, hey. Cha-cha, oh. cha-cha. Cha-cha, Yes, no way. So what did she say this was? She said it's peach vodka. Still from peaches. Oh gosh. Oh, it's smooth. Mmm. Like, remember when you take it down? Yeah. You feel like... Oh, with air too, with oxygen? Yeah. I really like the peach vodka. It's, it's it's almost dangerously smooth. It's you know? too smooth. Yeah. It's probably like 50 something percent. <laughs> that's how you get the blood flowing in the morning, right? Oh, that's it. Oh, when you're in Georgia, do you like the Georgians? No, 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 no. no. All right, I'm only gonna take a little sip of this one because this is straight up cognac brandy. Oh, this one's good though. <laughs> it's rocket fuel, dude. Here. It's even better cold, she says. Maglova. Maglova. <laughs> she gave me more of the salt. Insane. We have two bags already of the salt. Maglova. Maglova. Didi, thank you for showing Georgia. Thank you for showing Georgia to the world. Oh, these are churchelos, and so she said that she makes them herself, and uh, then we're invited to her place to, uh, to watch her make it. Don't know if we'll have time for that, but it sounds interesting. That is basically walnuts with uh, syrup or fruit juice thickened with uh, like corn flour or wheat flour. And you see like some of them have walnuts, some of them have hazelnuts. Like the thin ones are hazelnuts. And these ones with two different colors, these are usually have dried fruit in the middle. A nice snack. They call it their version of Snickers. It's the best thing to take with you on a hike because it doesn't melt. It lasts forever. And I'm going to grab a little walnut. I need it. Mm. This country is all about walnuts. And these are mushrooms, huh? What are these? Yeah, these are mushrooms. They look like the ordinary like champignon sort of mushrooms. In this region, they actually gather a lot of wild mushrooms. I haven't seen any yet, but maybe, maybe we'll run into them. How are you? So over here we have chicken, right? This is an entire section of chicken all cleaned out. You know, obviously they were killed today. Super fresh, part of the best chicken you will get in Georgia right here. Charm it, charm it, charm it. It's not cooked, is it? <laughs> no. Wash it out, like uh, cook it up and enjoy it, she says. I've never seen this. This lady has like a little propane gas here and she gets a chicken and whatever's left like of the feathers, she just literally tortures it. <laughs> this is great. We should get one of these chicken and make a feast later. Absolutely. With some of that garlic creamy sauce. Exactly. So that's enough of the chicken ladies. Let's walk over over here and see the butcher. And they're having their morning cha-cha right there. <laughs> Incredible. Wow, look at that. <laughs> hello, hello. I got like four butchers here, so as people come, they tell them what they want, you know, cut this piece, cut that piece, this is how much they want in terms of weight, and that's it, right? Absolutely, Easy. absolutely. This is what I love about this part of the world, is that you get the freshest meat. It's not like going to a supermarket in America where it's been frozen for, you know, who knows how long, exactly. from what farm it came from. This came from probably this guy's farm, 
and you brought it here today. Exactly, exactly. They have some contacts in the villages, like some neighbors, some cousins, and they all bring their stuff together and they sell it here. So. This butcher right here is cutting up a cow leg. So he cuts it almost like a steak, right? Mm -hmm. And then he divides the toes. Yeah. Wow. Like, later on, they're going to use this to make kashi, which is like the sort of like a... Uh, uh, over soup made out of like either innards or like feet or like knees or something like this and mixed with like garlic. I haven't tried it, right? I don't think you've tried it yet. We gotta find that. Yeah. Sometime in this trip we have to find that. Whoa. <laughs> a spectacle, dude. I love this place. My favorite market so far in Georgia. Maloba. Maloba. All right, let's uh, check out Pickle World. The entire section of pickles. Wow. My favorite is this one, man. Right here. Donjoli. Donjoli. The best. Pickle the best. flowers. Pickled flowers. We got pickled chilies. What else? We got cabbages. Mm -hmm. We have garlic. Stuffed green tomatoes. Oh man, that looks that so stuff. good. Yeah. And you just eat like that? Straight, right? You, just, you can just eat it straight, yeah. Exactly. I might have to buy one. <laughs> they're, they're delicious. Especially okay. after a shot of chacha. Yeah? <laughs> Can I have one of these? Okay, so we're gonna try a pickled tomato? Yeah, pickled green tomato. It's like it's stuffed with herbs and spices. Oh my gosh. Let's do this. Oh my god. Mmm. A little sour. How is it pickled? Inside you have lots of herbs. Super juicy. So when you bite into it, all the water just burst out. Mmm. Cha cha on this, right? Yeah, absolutely. The perfect thing to take after a, 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 some hard liquor in the morning. Mm hmm. Mmm. Oh, delicious. I love this stuff. I, really do. I love it. Wow. Big shout out to my friend over there. She didn't even charge me. She's like, no, you eat. Dude, I'm, I'm just eating for free. It's crazy. This is, this is Georgian hospitality, man. Like, they just they, they love guests. They love to have people enjoy what they, what they make. So. God bless Georgia. Oh, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. I like it. it has like a slight fizziness to it. Maloba, mm maloba. -hmm. So what's next? Well, over here we got some fruits. We got some nuts. Oh, it doesn't end. <laughs> this is bigger. Wow. This entire section is made up of just fruits and vegetables. It never ends, right? Potatoes, tomatoes, watermelon, melon. We got walnuts. <laughs> Everything is in season right now, basically. Like different kinds of berries, fruits, uh, peaches, apricots. Oh wow, look at these. Cherries. These are like the tiny ones. Wow. Yeah, what's I this haven't called? seen those. I forgot what this is called in English. Uh, uh, this is like uh, red currants. Red currants? Red currants, yeah. And that's black currants then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I try well, one? Jokes, yeah, the However many you want, he said. However many I want, my gosh. Mmm. Mmm, oh my gosh. So they're like tiny grapes, basically. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Oh. A little sour? Yeah. I like it though. Mm -hmm. Wild blueberries. Wild blueberries. I'm gonna try one. Try some, try some, he says. Mm. Oh, that's good. Come on, all those berries. Very lovely. Chuchela. Yeah, give us some. Mm -hmm. mm. Walnut, pasty. I love it. I, it's, the important part is it's fresh. Like you can still very chewy. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's it's best that way. A lot of calories. Mm -hmm. mm. Let's try black currant. Black currant. Let's go. Mmm. Yeah, so good. Mm -hmm. Black currant. Amazing. So, there's the taste again. Sour, but this is more like almost like a blackberry. Maloba. After all these fruits and vegetables, I need a category. So we just passed the fruit and vegetable section. Next up, we're going through basically the flea market. Over here, we have a lot of shoes and sandals, like literally a mountain of them. I'm looking actually for another luggage because they gave me so many bottles of wine on this trip that I need a second luggage to take them home. Literally 18 bottles. So far, I still have three full days left, right? So this guy's got like different odds and ends for around the house, around the village. Uh, we've got different like ropes, tools, chains. He said, unfortunately, we can't find any luggage here. We have to go to a different bazaar, so we might have to check that out. It's okay, it's okay. So everything here is for gardening, basically. Yeah. Oh, ho, oh. 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 
And over here we have a lot of wood, right? So yeah. different boards. Cutting boards, mortar and pestle. It's like uh, some, also some ropes, some spoons, some uh, kitchen utensils. Eight lorries. Eight lorries. Eight lorries for the fish. I take it. Uh -huh. I take it. You, you said it's, she said it's made out of walnut wood. No way. That's amazing. I'm gonna give this to my wife. She's gonna love it. A little board, you know, a cheese board, basically, right? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Eight lari. So less than three dollars for this. What a bargain. Maloba. Maloba. So you got some flower sifters, you got a panduri, which is a traditional musical instrument. Looks like there are some like pipes for like smoking. Uh, some baskets. So these are cowbells, right? You put yeah. them on the cow. Awesome. No more fruits, no more vegetables. I need a kachapuri. And we found it. Kachapuri right here. They have a few different versions, right? So they have the kachapuri. I'm sure they have a bean one. They have these which is like like rolled with hot dogs inside, right? They also have wine. So if you want wine, wow, these are cool bottles. Look at this. Mm -hmm. Really nice. Yep. Bread and wine. That's the name of this place. Bread and wine. And in the back you can see them doing all the kachapuri. Amazing. Okay, hello, hello. 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 <laughs> okay, so here we go. We're in the back, we're gonna see them put the bread into the Tony. This is my favorite bread in all of Georgia. So good. So they get the dough, they put it, you know, in this shape, right? It's beautiful, like almost like a pyramid shape. Then they put it on the pillow, from there it goes into the Tony. It sits there for like three, four minutes, roughly, you know, five minutes max. And then he covers it, takes the cover off, and then he's gonna pull them all out. Oh, they're gonna be so good. So we're gonna eat this, we're gonna eat a kachapuri, and maybe some cha-cha. Maloba, maloba. Thank you so much, thank you so much. Maloba, maloba. Let's eat. Let's eat, let's eat. Woo! Okay, let's get some food. I'm hungry. Yeah. I'm starving. Yeah. Well, Man, what did we get here? So we got one kachapuri, one lobiani. So like with the cheese filling and with the bean filling. And this is the kachapuri. Obviously I've eaten kachapuri, I think like 10 times already, but in a different place, different land, different cheese, different water, that makes the kachapuri completely different and unique, right? Just grab a slice, you know, like cut it almost like a pizza, you know, just give you little slices. My man, let's eat. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Nice and smoky. Mmm. -hmm. Mm. Super soft cheese. And this is like the mozzarella cheese, right? Like Imeruli Quelli, like the cheese specifically from this region, from Imeretti. Hopefully I can find a Georgian restaurant in Miami. Let's see. I love it. I mean, we did it. Good stuff, man. The Green Bazaar. Do from 8 to 10 to 11, walk around, you know, talk with locals, try some food, obviously support the locals, buy some stuff, eat this food. Mm-hmm. And there's a bean filling. Cheese and dough, unreal. Whoa, it's gonna be good. Mmm. The best one I've had is the bean. This one, a little different, right? A little more pasty. Oh, look at that. So I'm guessing like brown beans, right? Or yeah. red beans? I think brown ones. I think these two are my favorites. I don't know about that one. This one for sure the beans. Mm -hmm. And these ones just came hot out of the oven, so this one is still nice and warm. Yeah, super warm. That one's a little colder, but perfect, you know? Mm -hmm. Love it, love it. Maybe some wine. Maybe some wine. Yeah. I didn't try any wine in this area, so maybe I'll have a cup of a wine vendor around here somewhere. Yeah, I think all these guys have wine around here somewhere. <laughs> Everybody has wine. <laughs> wine and cha-cha. Yeah. All locally produced, you know, from their homes. Something really cool about Georgia is they don't really import water. You're not gonna find these huge brands. You're gonna find their local brands. Obviously, got amazing mountains, glaciers. The water is so fresh. Mm -hmm. Oh man, ice cold. Tastes so good. All right, I think we're ready to try some wine. Let's go. Seven lari fifty, so two dollars and fifty cents. That is a bargain. Sweet. Sweet. She poured me a huge glass. <laughs> it's the same restaurant, right? Bread and wine, but the other side next to where you have the fruit and vegetable vendors. Sweet wine. 
semi-sweet. Yeah, it's not like a port. It's just, oh, it's good, it's good. Mm. Yeah, right? Super cold. Very like, refreshing in the morning. Yeah, ice, like chilled to the max. Oh, it's perfect. After all that bread, mm -hmm. feel great. Mm -hmm. What time is it? 10 a.m. Not bad, yeah, not bad. So we're in the Imereti region, and here they have uh, different kinds of grapes than the one that grows in the east. So actually later today we're going to check out a winery here called Baya's Wine, where they're specialized in the production of these grapes and these wines. So if you want to try some wine, come here to the bread and wine restaurant right to the fruit and vegetable section. It was five lati for this huge glass, and that is roughly a dollar fifty, right? Yeah. And that's it, my friends. We explored the Green Bazaar, the most authentic, the oldest bazaar in the smack center of the old town of Kutai. What an experience here. So cool. Kutaisi, Kutaisi. Awesome, awesome. People are so friendly. You can see cheese vendors, you got butchers, oh, fruits and vegetables, you got wine, you got kachapuri, lots of bread. And yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Georgia. Let's go. Good afternoon everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Bin here, coming at you from the beautiful Imaneti wine region in western Georgia, about 30 minutes south of Kutaisi, and this village is called Obcha, and we're here at Baya's Winery. Baya is a young girl, and she does incredible Imaneti wines, which are indigenous grapes from the region. They also make delicious Imaneti cuisine, which is also diverse, and what we're gonna do today is we're gonna walk around the property, see the vineyard, see the cellar, try wines, try food, I'm very excited. I cannot wait. Follow me. Let's go. Here we have Imanete grapes. And hey, hey buddy, come here, come here, come here. Yes. This is their dog. <laughs> Imanete is a big region in the center of the country and uh, this area near the city of Baghdati. So some of the best wines of Imanete are produced. So they ha I'm not entirely sure what all the varieties they have, but they have like Oja Leshi, Tsitska Soli Kaori, uh, and a bunch of other ones like this. And here we have some of the grapes, right? Obviously they're not ready. It's not harvest yet. That's in September, October roughly. Yeah, October for this region. October for this region. Awesome, mm -hmm. yeah, because September is usual harvest in Europe, but in Cajeti, that's September. When you go all the way to Batumi, it gets like into even no, like November, right? Yeah, into early November. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so let's go inside. It's me, Obaya. Gwansa. Hey, uh, my name is Gwansa, and you are guys now in the uh, western part of Georgia in Baya's winery. Baya is, by the way, my sister. And we are doing wines like together uh, with my brother, my sister, and I, and Bo as well, which you, I think, will see soon. In our case, uh, because of uh, Georgia's have uh, this kind of beautiful possibility to have its own indigenous grape varieties, um, we have here like uh, three white grapes. The, those are like very typical Imeretian grapes. The names are Tzitzel. Tzolik Auri and Krahuna. So right now, for example, we are standing in uh, Tzolik Auri vineyard and you can see already our baby berries. They just came out. And we also have in Red Grapes case Otshanuri Sapere and Aldasturi, which are again like very rare indigenous Georgian variety and you will try those today. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm ready. Let's try some wines. Let's, try. let's go, let's go. And this is the property, right? So we have uh, you know, a tasting area right here next to the vineyard, right? So look, you can overlook the entire vineyard. Beautiful, and right now it's, it's a little hazy out there, but he was saying like, when it's not hazy, you could see all the mountain range. I mean, you can see a little bit, but not too much, right? Okay, let's go over to the cellar. And I love this. Here you can just have some food, try some wines, and relax. And this is Bo. Bo. So he wants to say hi, but of course he wants to show you the cellar. <laughs> He's also a drinker, right? Uh, well, he is helping us a lot. He has a main job in it. So this is guys our secret space uh, where we are doing our wines. And uh, so I will show you now our Kveri room, which is our small kingdom. And then we will also see, mm, go and see our aging space as well. Yeah. I love this. This is called Krevri. 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 <laughs> 8,000 year old tradition. Oh, I love the way you guys did it though. 
very unique with oh. all the rocks and everything. This is so cool. So this is guys our Kveri space where we um, uh, are doing our wines and uh, the Kveri is done with the clay uh, and uh, so it's always inside the ground uh, and then it's a beautiful because during the fermentation process you have this beautiful temperature stability and we love to make wine inside and it's very uh, like uh, old Georgian tradition which counts like 8,000 years old already. So guys, right now we are in our aging space and uh, the main difference between the aging space and our query space is like after a four or five months uh, query aging, we pump our wines from that uh, room and we put it here and then wine is going to be here extra two, three months and then we are bottling. So it's time to try wine, finally. <laughs> Let's do that. So now we're going up to the side of this building, which is the main part of the property. And from here we get views, right? Overlooking the entire yeah. vineyard. Our favorite space because it's a brand new, so we just built this year. But it's beautiful because from here you can go on the terrace during the like sunset time and if you have some ice cream or a glass of wine or whatever you like and uh, uh, we hang out here a lot. And uh, yeah, it's just like a uh, very cozy space for us. I mean, this is gorgeous. Right here you have everything. <laughs> so there's all your vines right here, right? All yeah. of this. Like our small kingdom, the part of uh, our vineyard. Wow. Yay, time for bottles. <laughs> we have like a super new stuff on our bottles. Um, the project from my friend, it's a small stickers and when you scan it, then you open like our website uh, and you see this like a tr kind of tracking from the harvest till like a, after fermentation and bottling time, what steps are wine going to do? Amazing. Yeah, we were so excited for wow. that. Wow, so we have four different ones, dry white, Krakuna. Yeah. Then we have a la destura rose. Uh huh. Tiska. 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 And then Tiska tisulurcuria crocuna. Yeah. Tzitzka, so <laughs> it's a, a blend of three, right? Yeah. So everything's dry white wine, and then we have a rose. Also, uh, red wine. If you pay like one box of chocolate to me. If you don't, then I will bring. But for the next time, we will bring. With. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, crazy. It starts from Krakuna. So it's like a very interesting grape variety, very like uh, picky to work. We tried to age like four months in February this year. My friend Gamar Jos. Gamar Jos. Gamar Jos. Gamar Jos. Gamar Jos. Smells great. Mmm. Nice, dry, light. People are saying like Krakuna is more like a, um, you can feel there more a tropical tropical fruit inside and like a lime and but also I feel that wine is very personal. It's just like the important is that if you're enjoying it. This is perfect for a super hot day like today. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> Opa. <laughs> Opa. Now let's try our rosé, uh, which is actually like a very uh, very funny for us because so we were trying to make rosé already uh, three years and first our rosé what we done was like a, people call it like a light body red wine so <laughs> it was the color was pretty red but beautiful as well and this is the year like a 2019 and 2020 for us was more uh, more light uh, color in rosé's case all right here we go Salmon color rosé, that's what she's saying. I mean, just the way it looks, right? Because some rosés are way more pink, some are a little more red. Nice fruity. Mm. Oh, another good one. And nice and chilled, right? Also tasty. I can have this on a super hot day like today in Miami. It's like every day is today. <laughs> the third one, which we are going to try, is my baby. So it's our Otshanuri Sapere, uh, like um, a very full body red wine, what we have in our winery. In Otshanuri's case, you have like a latest harvest because sometimes we have, oh, sometimes we have in middle of uh, November, it could be also sometimes like a beginning of November, but it's uh, our last one always. My friends, Gamar Jos, thank you so much. Thanks for coming, guys. So this is their bold red wine. Oh, wow. It smells amazing. Mmm. Mmm. Very nice. It's dry, easy to drink, 
you know, especially today, hot day, usually we go with white, right? Yeah. It, I, I don't know, I mean, I wouldn't compare it to like a Shiraz, but Shiraz is like my favorite grape, and I feel like it's more there, so like with a good steak, right? Uh, Perfect. Yeah. Also to Shiraz. Oh, are they? Yeah. Yeah. I got something right. I'm not a sommelier, <laughs> but I'm doing my best here. Yeah. Grab my dress, grab my dress again, grab my dress. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. It's, it's a good one. Mm. My favorite wine so far. We still have two more to go, but we're gonna see how they make some food. We're gonna eat some Imareti food with these two delicious dry whites. Wow, that's incredible. So she's gonna show us how they make the eggplant rolls. Uh, and they're gonna mix uh, some spices uh, and they're gonna put, make the eggplant rolls and also they're gonna do the same thing in uh, red pepper. So ingredients, eggplant, red pepper. Then we have garlic, coriander, onion, uh, red pepper, um, salt. That one is walnut or not? Yeah, this is walnuts and this uh, is a uh, uh, mixed spices. Okay, perfect. Mixed Georgian spices. And this is the appetizer we have usually in every restaurant. Mm -hmm. It's the eggplants with mm -hmm. the delicious walnut paste. Yeah, so they've got the uh, eggplants and the peppers already fried, cut and fried, and they're gonna we're gonna mix the spices. Let's do it. The aroma is like out of this world. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, all oh. these spices, vinegar, everything is mm. really powerful. That vinegar. Look at this. Oh, so good. This is vinegar made out of the best wine. Yeah. So next up, they're gonna do the red peppers. The difference is they don't add the coriander. That's it, right? Yeah. Okay, I have to try it. Mmm. <laughs> it is delicious. Wow, that walnut paste. She is too nice. All right, let's not stop here any longer, she says. Let's go eat. Let's go, let's go. Let's go eat. Okay, so we came over here to the side of their house to eat just because over there, you know, it's really hot right now. We got out of the sun and we're gonna eat those two dishes plus another dish, some bread and some more wine. Oh, I love it. This is oh my gosh. this is like the Georgian tapas in a way, right? It's like uh, green beans, actually. It looks like green beans, like in the same sort of style with some walnut paste. Oh, wow, look at all this. We have spinach. Uh, this is called pchali. These are different kinds of pchali. And oh, wow, some kind of wild thorn. Uh, which grows only in this region. This is a uh, tremali, Georgian wild plum sauce. This is gonna be amazing. Mm -hmm. I am so excited. Look at this. It's just like straight farm to table from their land, directly into our mouths. Wow. Oh my gosh. Look at this feast, my friends. Garmajos, Garmajos. Garmajos, Garmajos, Garmajos. Thank you so much. This is amazing. Absolutely. Mmm. Okay, this one is more like arbarino. Mm. This one's more of that taste. Wow. So we got chicken salad. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six of these beautiful clay pot veggie dishes, bread and beans. I'm ready. Let's eat. Let's go. <laughs> All right, it is time to eat. I'm starting off with the eggplant. I have to. Um. Oh, so good. <laughs> Here we go. Oh man, that vinegar. Mm. The best ever. Mm. Ever. Oh, mama. So happy. No. It, 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 you know, it's, really it's hard to, to like say which is the best I've had on this trip, but this one's so distinct with the vinegar. Mm. Mm. The walnuts, too. So I, I uh, love also vinegar. Actually, mm. it's uh, one of my favorite uh, stuff in Emirati cuisine. And we do like our own ones at home. I feel mm. like every family does that. And then, you know, like time by time, you're adding like extra. And liquid to them. Wild thorns. Yeah. So walnuts is king. Yeah. yeah. Right? Absolutely. And garlic. Like mm -hmm. Garlic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So don't come here on a date. <laughs> <laughs> over here, this one's beets, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So fresh, so healthy. Wow. Now trying the pepper. So the difference between the eggplant and the pepper is just those two things. Inside the same, but this one doesn't have coriander. It's amazing. Like, I'm so happy. Mm. Mm. When you feel a lot more of the vinegar, right? Yeah. Mm. Mm. And more spice, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. A little more spice. Yeah. That's the best part, right? Mm. I mean, I'm a big <laughs> spicy guy. Like, I throw like chili on everything. Yeah, <laughs> wow. Mmm. And this one, you said it was not spinach, it's something else. Well, I'm sure I'm gonna love it. Mmm. <laughs> it's a lot easier to eat than this one. 
Mm. That one's a little more, say, bitter. Uh -huh. You know? Yeah. It's like a weed, but it definitely has a spinach feel. Oh, right? right. Mm -hmm. Like almost creamy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll have some more. <laughs> no, please. Mmm. Mm. And this one is um, beans, right? Yeah. Mm. And wow, with all these big bites. <laughs> so good. Mmm. Every single one is so unique. Oh. Mmm. So tasty. I'm gonna get some more of this beets. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of beets. Mmm. And we have the kajapuri. Wow. No, it's too hot. You gotta wait. You gotta uh, uh, wait. Uh, you should guys try also the um, tomato salad. Tomato salad? Oh, yeah. so add some cheese. Mm -hmm. Make it more like Greek. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, and olive oil. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm. And this tomato is right from here? Yeah. So you have uh, most of the plants and vegetables. And yeah, everything's available. Yeah. Or there is also this beautiful place we call it like a it looks like a farmer market. Okay. okay. And that's why you get the freshest ingredients is every day. Yeah. They bring it. Mm, but most of the time she just lives down here and uh, so she have this beautiful uh, piece of land just next to the river and she grows there like eggplant and like all the vegetables almost everything like uh, um, but this um, this green one I still don't remember the name Gigi uh, Loa. Amaranth. Yeah, Amaranth. And my father is going and picking. <laughs> It's like he loves that. <laughs> he loves mm -hmm. that. Last night I tried is the ketchup and the chicken, but yeah. I need another sip of wine. <laughs> mm. it's, it's so good, it's like dripping down my throat. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking my hair. <laughs> okay, next up, I got the chicken, and you know what? I gotta add to this little wing some of this plum sauce. Mm hmm. Mm. Mm. Oh, wow. A little sour, mm -hmm. but also a little sweet. Mmm, nice and cold. I love this. Farm chicken. So good, my friend. <laughs> Next up, we have to try this kachapuri, right? Mm. What a beauty. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mmm. The cheese is more like, like oozing out. This one. More melted. Mmm, those soft. Mmm. The top, obviously, butter. Mm -hmm. Always. So it's like a real village style hachapuri. Dude, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. Remember, when you're in Georgia, every time you eat, you're gonna have hachapuri. Most likely, right? It's part of the diet. And if you guys wanna come here, you can come for 50 uh, gel per person, which is roughly like, um, let's say, like almost 20 US dollars. You can come have lunch or dinner and get three different wines, you know, paired with it. For a hundred per person, you can stay here. They have a guest house, right? In the in their original house. It's a great deal. Love it, love it. <laughs> and now I'm gonna Did jump on the beans. I, I tried it, it was oh. fantastic. The cheese, uh, the cheese. <laughs> it's from our neighbor's lazy cow. Like. Oh yeah? Uh -huh. Your neighbor's lazy cow? Yes. Okay. <laughs> that guy's These are amazing beans. And in case you guys don't know, coriander is cilantro. I didn't know that for a long time, but that's because it's a different language, right? Yeah. More kachapuri. Ooh. Cheers. Mm. Cheers. 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 Mm. You're the best, you're the best. Gavansa, thank you so much. Uh, thanks for coming. It was big, big, big pleasure. No, no. Pleasure was mine. This was amazing. Bye. Winery, Baya. Baya's Winery. Baya's yeah. Winery, and where are we in Georgia? So, we are in the western part, so we are west coast. West coast. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys can come here, you can try their wines, eat their food, explore the grounds. I mean, this is a must visit on the way from Kataisi down to Batumi, or going from Batumi to Tbilisi in route, right? Yep. Awesome, thank you so much. Thanks, thanks No, you're the best, you're the best. And the food? <laughs> so guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Georgia. Let's go. <gasps>
Good afternoon everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Bin here coming at you from the Guria region in southwestern Georgia. Today I'm taking you to explore an eco farm called Kumli. This place is really unique. They make wine, they grow their own fruits and vegetables, they grow their own tea and make their own tea. They have Guria cuisine which is really really unique. And look at this, I want to show you this. Come here, come. some pigs hanging out right here. <laughs> Amazing. But let me take you into the property. Comley is a really special place for me. Like I know these people for a lot of years. And it's just, it's a little magic kingdom. They're doing everything beautiful here. They're, uh, they've restored a really beautiful old farmhouse, like their family's ancestral house. So you can stay there and have the rooms look exactly how, how they did centuries ago. Um, they've put some uh, cool places in here, like these wine barrels, you can stay in the wine barrels. Everything they, they make is organic, it's clean, they have their vegetables. Uh, it's just a, such a beautiful place. As soon as you walk into the property, in front of us, we have the main building. To the left, we have the vegetable garden. So what do they have there? Well, it looks like right now, they just have a bunch of different herbs. Uh, sometimes they're also growing vegetables and uh, uh, there's also some fruit trees up here. So tree over here, the wild plums. I think one of these is a pear tree. Uh, one of these is an apricot tree. So like we have some dill here, some mint here. Uh, some blackberries here. Yeah, a bunch of different stuff. And right here, we have some cherries, right? I'm not sure what the thing Yeah, this like cherries. I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is, actually. Mmm. That's not right yet. Mm -hmm. And over here, we have some plums, right? Yeah, it's gonna be sour. I'll try it. Yeah, I think it's gonna be too sour. It's like rock hard. Yeah. I'm good. Uh, I... Actually, it's not bad. Ooh, it's super sour. Ooh, ooh. Perfect for making sauce. Okay, so let's continue touring the property. Oh, and right here, we have the vineyard, right? What they've done, they've uh, planted some like rare versions of uh, rare varieties of, of Gurian grapes, like specifically indigenous to this region. So I don't remember the names of all of them, like Jani, uh, Shrila Tubani. And so these are very young vines. They're uh, only like three years old right now, I think. So they're not really producing grapes for that are ready for, for winemaking. So right now they're buying grapes from other grape growers in the region and making wine out of that. And hopefully when in a couple years when these vines are more mature, uh, they'll make their own wine out of their own grapes. Yeah, in case you guys don't know, uh, vines need to be at seven years before you can actually use the grapes for producing wine. And over here we have a well, right? This is the water source for the property. And this is very interesting. What do you think this could have been, David? I have no idea, man. This water shouldn't be in here right now. I guess it's rained and it's, it's gotten some water in here. But this is an ancient piece of technology. So you would take some water and you'd pour it into this little contraption. The water should fill and then over uh, as the water comes in, like it'll slowly empty out and then it will come back into here and it will, uh, what you would have grain in here, like uh, some, uh, like either rice or, or corn or something like that. So basically this is an ancient grain presser, right? Exactly. Just fill exactly. up the water and it keeps doing the work for you. Exactly, exactly. You would just keep running the water into it and grind your grain. Awesome. Okay, so let's continue down the property. Something really unique that Tim just told me about is that they also have like a bamboo forest. Yeah, yeah. This is incredible. Look right here. You sleep in this barrel. And you can also tent here if you want to. <gasps> Look at this. Is it open? So they turned a barrel into a guest room. Wow. I mean, the oak. Exactly. Whoa, exactly. it's strong. Such an aroma, man. <laughs> Such an aroma. And this is number, whatever, whenever they bought it from, that's the number, right? Yeah, I think this like refers to its location inside the wine factory. Okay. So this yeah. became once upon a time from a huge wine factory. Yeah. So like north, 37 east 16 yeah yeah something like that i've been to a few wine factories like in kosovo that are like they have these massive barrels that you just mm -hmm. never see anywhere else you know mm -hmm. oh, i love this dude yeah i want to do this in my farm get like oh. 20 of these you know exactly just like a huge up. roll oh yeah. man uh, is this greek or know yourself the ancient philosopher diogenes lived in a barrel he was the original one. Oh yeah yeah great fact tim Thanks for teaching me that. <laughs> they brought a second barrel to the property a few months ago, which they're also going to restore and like make into a second room. So like uh, this property is also full of hazelnut trees. And a lot of people don't know is that you can eat hazelnuts raw. Um, so like a fresh young hazelnuts, you just take a little cluster, take a hazelnut, 
peel this thing up. You got, you got to crack it open with your teeth, but you can do that because it's super soft. It hasn't gotten a hard shell yet. Here we go. Mm. It's good. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's different than your average hazelnut flavor. Very different. Mm -hmm. This is a little more bitter, mm -hmm. right? More bitter, more juicy. More juicy. Mm -hmm. It's nice. I want to eat everything on this property. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go to the bamboo forest. Yeah. What a property, man. Hazelnuts everywhere. Got bamboo. You got tea somewhere in here. Huge property, right? This is amazing. I feel like I'm back in Japan, man. Woo! Look at this. Oh, dude, I would love to have a little tent in here. Yeah. Yeah, right? And it's so different in terms of temperature. It just dropped like five degrees right now. Exactly. Like on a hot summer day, like come chill out here. Bamboo forest next to the next to the little stream. So this is our tea right here. All these bushes. Oh, it's a pretty small plantation, like maybe like maximum 200 bushes. This is, uh, this is where the tea comes from. You can make from this both black tea and green tea. The difference is like in the method of preparation, the technology of preparation. Yeah, as in black tea is processed. Black tea goes through a fermentation process um, in addition to the, the fixation process that the green tea goes through. By the way, Tim's an expert. He actually just started a tea company in Georgia. Absolutely. Plant brews, plant brews. So to make tea, you need to have the youngest and newest leaves. So for example, like this. So like maximum three leaves. So here we have two leaves and a bud. And this one's also good. You can get this. It has the perfect kind of softness that you need to make the tea out of. These are already old leaves. So these are needed to like keep the plant alive. But like to make the tea, you're only picking like the newest little shoots of, of, of leaves. Here you can do around six flushes a year. It's like six pickings a year. In a more tropical country like India, Sri Lanka, Kenya, you can pick all year round, like around once a month. But here, because we have a winter, uh, the, the bushes go dormant uh, in the winter. So we, we get around like six flushes every year. Uh, it looks like these have actually been picked fairly recently. So I'm not seeing a whole lot of leaves, but I'll just get some more for, for example. Good sized bud, like uh, two leaves. The best tea is picked by hand. The commercial tea farm, you see them coming through with machines. You're gonna get a lot of like, like just feel, feel the difference between these leaves. To make the tea, you need to go through this whole process of like uh, rolling them, of fermenting them. And these, tea, these leaves are just so much more responsive to that process. And this, this like nothing, com nothing worthwhile comes out of that. So I've been to many different tea farms around the world. I've been in uh, India, in China, and the only one that I've been to that's organic is in, uh, it's like actually next to Kara, to Manadu, it's the highest one in the world, mm -hmm. but organic, right? So no pesticides, you know, the way, exactly. the way it is, it's not all together. It's, it's old plants separated, so mm -hmm. you can go around. And yeah, picking by hand is the best way. And sorry for the construction noise, but they're building a house over here, a mud house, which we'll see later. So they're expanding this property like crazy. Uh -huh. um, so Absolutely. we're gonna take this and we're gonna go make it. So the whole process takes around like 24 to 36 hours. So we wouldn't be able to show the entire thing, but we can show like what's, uh, so I'll take the fresh leaves up to Lika and then we can like compare them to the important thing is that we have like the whole leaves in the tea. Like the best tea comes out of making whole leaves. They shouldn't be cut in any way. So now we're going down to the stream and we're gonna get on a boat and paddle a little bit yep. and go through. Man, it's crazy the temperature, how it just like changes that fast. Mm -hmm. Like here in the shade, it's completely different. So beautiful, peaceful. Uh, that's why it's good to have bamboo. <laughs> you can make anything out of bamboo. Oh, and this is the boat? This is our river Kikwata. The best place to be on a hot day. And this is our little boat. This is probably one of the smallest boats I've ever been on. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> this is stable? <laughs> that's good, man. It's good. And this place is famous for its frogs, right? Or it's, it's really like yeah. frog heaven. Yeah, so Kikwata means like basically frogs, frog stream. Let's see if we see any. I'm sure they're gonna start like jumping in as we make our way through here. Any mosquitoes here? Ah, there should be some. Yeah. But I think Always. I got one or two bites already. Yeah, yeah. I felt a few. That's why I asked. Mm -hmm. I was like, what's happening? I just don't want, I don't so know. peaceful. So relaxing out here. Just be careful. This is obviously not the, supposed to have two grown men on it. <laughs> Starting to fill up with some water, but it's all good. So you have a little bit of fish. You have a bunch of frogs. A little hard to see because you know not that much sun right now, but mm -hmm. uh, so relaxing. 
perfect. This time of the day, it's what we needed. Let's take a chill and breathe. I feel good, bro. I feel great. That's good, that's good. That boat's very tiny. <laughs> it's amazing. Back in the bamboo forest. What's up, man? I just came to this part of the property where they're building one of the new houses and the worker's like, come with me, come with me. And he's like, I got something for you. I bet you money, it's like cha-cha. It, oh, it looks like it. Camera <laughs> Joss. How are Joss? America? America. No, Georgia. Yeah. He's too nice. Camera Joss. No. Oh my gosh. Oh, here. Look. Um, <laughs> what are you oh, he just gave me some. It's like brandy. Oh, mm. It's strong. Oh, oh but it's tasty. Camera Joss. Gurias. 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 Camera Joss. Gurias. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I'm good with that. Good cognac. It's good, it's good. Cognac, yeah. Strong. We've got a tiny little wine cellar I can show you, but... Yeah, yeah, let's do it. See the wine cellar. Wow. This is cool. Look at this. So we have big jugs for the wine. We have a few different stainless steel tanks. Mm -hmm. Small wine cellar, right? So yeah. right now they all obviously buy all the grapes from their neighbors because mm -hmm. their wines are still very young. But this is it. So we'll try some wines. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is awesome. Hey guys. All right. So they're mixing some mud here to make a construction called Waddle and Dob. So like they'll make some bricks out of this, and they'll, they're constructing a family home down there. So like this obviously was the original family home, but as more and more generations uh, are added to the family, they need to expand. And right here we have another Lubiani. So what is Lubiani? If you guys don't know already, this is basically beans with bread. Mmm. Bottom there, a little fluffier. Top, very thin. And the inside, which is bean paste. Mm hmm. Good red beans this time. Mm -hmm. Wow. After that, cha cha, or the cognac down there, I need food. And also some pastries here. Look at this. So I just brought this from the bakery. It's amazing. So it looks like a few layers of dough. You have a uh, sugar powder on top, and it's cream inside. I'll have one of these later. I'm gonna enjoy this, and you know what? She wanted to pour some more cha so why not? Fantastic. So they say this is the strongest cha of the trip. <laughs> Luckily for me, I didn't drink that much today. <laughs> See? Oh God. It says pear. It's pear. It's pear. Okay, cheers. Dude. Yeah, it's not worth the whole thing. Ooh. 60s? 60s, right? At least. <laughs> if you drink the whole thing, they get you buzzed right there. I don't want to misrepresent Georgia, but anywhere you go, they will offer you cha-cha. It's like... <sighs> okay. It's like a like cake. Homemade cake. From, from this... Uh, from this uh, house, from this garden. Apple cake, it's the apple strudel style. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Eat this with this. Next up, Tim is gonna make me some tea. All right, the old leaves, I'll just show you right here. Thought we're gonna make tea again. But you can see how, like when the tea has been made, like it's still the whole leaves. Here is green tea. So as you can see, like, the green tea doesn't go through the, the fermentation process. So it, it retains the, the green color. And that's, that's what gives it a, a different flavor. But you see it's also whole leaves. And uh, like the, just, just the three from the, the smallest tip. So you see three different stages of the tea leaves. Here's the fresh leaves that have been picked. This is them after they've been like fermented, rolled, and dried. And this is after they've been, then uh, already had tea made out of them. So I'm gonna clean a teapot right now. They're starting to make dinner. We have <laughs> beans, soup, we have a few paste, we have eggplant, we have onions, peppers. This onion is uh, baked on the oven with king, and then uh, season it by Korean uh, suneli. Spices? Korean spices. What is this soup? Is it chicken soup? 
Yeah, this is traditional chicken soup with uh, lemon and egg and with also with vinegar and different herbs. So are all these dishes local like uh, from the region? All yeah, so these are prepared in the Gurian style. Like other regions also make a, a chicken soup, but this is like in the specific Gurian style. Awesome. Same for the lobio, same for the... Nice, I mean I can't wait for these beans. But, they look amazing. Authentic in, in Gurian. Never gonna find anything like this in another region. This is uniquely Gurian. It's not quite ready yet. We have to wait until these leaves, leaves start falling back down. Once again, we'll wait for a few minutes and when we, when we start to see the leaves come back down, then we'll know it's ready. While we're waiting for the tea to settle, they're making some cornbread fritters with no butter. Yeah, so this is uh, called mjadi. Uh, we've tried some of it earlier, but this is again like the local style of making mjadi. Mm, it's so good. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't wait. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, like seven plates. Mm, something like that. It's gonna be good. It's a simple supper. <laughs> Tim, helping hand, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So these are their potatoes, but this is the first year they've tried to do it like permaculture style, like just putting it straight into the ground, no digging. All right, while we wait for the food, we're gonna try some tea. What do you wanna start with, David? Green or black? Green. All right, let's go with green tea. Going with black, I'm going with green. Let's enjoy. Mm hmm. Mm, very nice. Not only really would I sit for a while because mm -hmm. now it's still warm, but it's not too hot. Yeah. And you see, like in the meantime, all the leaves have kind of settled down to the bottom of the teapot. Mm hmm. So it's got a nice brew. Well, very nice. And this is gonna keep you up, right? It's already 7:30 at night. No, oh, exactly, exactly. It's uh, green tea, low caffeine. Mm. I need that. I need to cool down. Homemade, homegrown tea. Yeah. Organic Georgian tea. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're too funny. <laughs> what do we have? So we got uh, the mchadi and kweli, so uh, the corn fritter with, with fresh cheese. Uh, we got another one of these uh, red pepper rolls, mm -hmm. sweet pepper rolls, an eggplant roll. So these two you'll find like all over the country always, Yeah, right? but this is with a particular local spice mix. Mm -hmm. We have here ajab sandali, this is a vegetable stew, mixed vegetables. Mom. Here you have onions, which have been baked in the oven and filled with a walnut paste. Mm. And here we have salad again. Oh my god, best onions of all time. Mm -hmm. I'll eat them all. Give me another whole thing. <laughs> right here, right? Yeah, just, just just grab it with your hands and take it. Grab my hands? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And always with the cheese on top of like this, yeah, right? Yeah, cheese on top, yeah. Well, so cornbread for... Mmm. Mm -hmm. Super dense. Mmm. Fried. Yeah, amazing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna reach a Middle East style. Middle East style? Yeah. A little, uh, less salt, more. Mm -hmm. so you can see, like, it's super fresh because, like, when you eat it, it almost squeaks in your mouth. Yeah. Oh. That's how you know it's super, super fresh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they're bringing out the cha cha? Oh my gosh. The owner here is too much. She's like, you have to try this, but I already had it earlier. It's a super strong cha cha. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm. Oh, wow. Peppers are incredible. And all mm -hmm. this is from here, from the land, right? Yeah, all this is like locally grown. Mmm. A little sweet. Mm -hmm. A little smoky too. Mm -hmm. And here we have the eggplant. Mm. The land of eggplants and walnuts, man. Absolutely. The best. Absolutely. Match made in heaven. Mm -hmm. Corn fritter and fresh cheese. Cheese every time. I'm eating, I'm eating. I need some beans. Oh. Some oh. Dude, that onion though, with walnut. Mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't. I had no idea you can mix walnut with everything like this. Yeah, it's crazy. But with the right herbs, the right salt, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and this onion, you're gonna find that not in any restaurant in the country. That's totally unique here. Wow. Okay, so let's try these beans, bro. Oh. Absolutely. Oh. Mm. Mm. Herbs. Mm -hmm. It's a little creamy, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's more liquidy, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's made it like a little more. Mm. Liquidy. I don't know what they do here, but like this mix of herbs is incredible. Mm. Oh, that vegetable stew? Mm -hmm. Dude, it's like just falls apart. It's yeah. Like, it's like drips down your throat. That's how good it is. Yeah, I have all the different vegetables sort of like hugging each other, like sharing their flavors. Exactly. And now I'm like mixing everything here. Look, just mm -hmm. beans. The onion, potatoes. Mm -hmm. A little spicy? Oh, great. So I'm gonna put that with the potatoes. 
Oh, these potatoes. Mm-hmm. Oh, spicy. We got spicy, spicy chutney. Basil spicy chutney. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm ready to see you. Brought me a huge feast here. Ten people. Mm-hmm. She's the best. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. These potatoes, like, man, like just grown like, straight out of the garden. Like, mm-hmm. Permaculture, no dig, no no pesticides, no nothing. Mm-hmm. As pure as you can get it. Wow. And this is like a like an egg chicken soup, right? Yeah, perfect for hangover. Chicken soup with like egg, uh, lemon, and we add a little bit of, of uh, wine vinegar. Oh my god, that's a nice sourness. Nice. I mean, I was supposed to have this before, but yeah, it's fine. I'm trying it now. Yes. That's my tea. That's my tea. That's my <laughs> so because they drink a lot in this country, <laughs> you have to have this, right? Here's everything. Now you gotta keep like preparing yourself for more drinking and recovering from the previous drinking. Great. Should we have a, a shot? Yeah. Cha-cha? I did. I need one. <laughs> Cha-cha. This is a strong one. Is there any left? No. There's always something left. Always. And these are pears from here? Yeah. Yeah. I thought we just the pears here. So there's a mix of uh, the pear and the cha cha. I can smell Gamma that from Gamma your breath. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> I guess I'll just finish it, right? Go for it, go for it. That works it. Oh, this actually really helps. Yeah. That's crazy strong, dude. Crazy. It's like 65 No, dude, like, Raki is nothing like this. Oh, it's not This is another level. And that's it, guys. We explored Komli, an eco guest house in the middle of the Guria region. Exactly. Right? So this is between Kutaisi and Batumi, literally in halfway point, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. And it's incredible. So you come in here, you walk around, see the grounds, bamboo forest, vegetables, uh, they have the vineyard, we went down to the stream, we saw a few of the things they're building here, different houses, mm-hmm. we tried the tea, which is the most important part, right? Exactly, exactly, a small tea plantation, and like drinking the, the homemade tea. And we also tried cha-cha, we tried a few different dishes, regional dishes, my favorite was definitely the onions, mm-hmm. but I also love that cornbread with cheese on top, so good, and the soup, the soup, the chicken soup, I mean, that was perfect. Amazing, amazing, yeah. yeah. Amazing. Well guys, if you're ever in the area, please come out here. You can stay here. You can just chill, relax, see the grounds, and explore the area, right? Exactly. And if you love the video, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. See you in the next travel food adventure in Georgia. Let's go.